I'm sorry, I was eating food with my family.
Uh, Ian is opening soon. Sweet guys, welcome back to the High School E-League, the second best of three for today, the semifinals. And of course, unfortunately, Chico has left us for another realm. And so instead, I am joined by the one, the only, the fabulous, the amazing, the overhyped. Is that is that where I, is that where I'm meant to introduce myself? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like for that level of hype, that felt like the only way I could possibly introduce myself to to shoot you down as quickly as possible, my friend. I shut it down by saying the overhyped at the end, and you're just like, so it's already a burning mess by the time it got there, and you're just like, <laughs> I'm gonna screw it up even more. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly what I do. But uh, hello, guys. My name. Is of course you and Iato Street, and I will be your play by play for the second best of three series of tonight. And the two teams we've got here, both these teams are super familiar, bro. Because I mean, Perth Bolton School is a name I've seen many times this tournament. Yes, and Applecross, I believe we have cast the team B, but team A is another league entirely. So, go meet to see how they go. We are seeing some diamond level players in this game, so it's gonna be absolutely insane. Um, and, uh, as Yato steps away and stops eating his microphone, we show him. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just feel a personal attack coming from you, man. I mean... Well, dude, I know you're eating dinner, but the thing is, okay, food's on one part of the table, microphone's on the other part, stick to the food, buddy. I mean, we both know what my mouth should be used for instead of talking. Just all the food, all the time. We've got great passes tonight as well, so, you know, all of the, uh, all the food coming in today. But hopefully we will be getting into, uh... Yeah, this, I'm trying to think of a way I can integrate food into a line here, but it's it's really not working, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, getting into this game between these two teams. Because if I'm not mistaken, this is poking in and around the, the finals area. Oh, semi-finals is the best of three. We just saw um before Melbourne High School sweep Team John Monash High School. Absolutely shut them down, demolished them, destroyed them, obliterated them. Exactly. And now we... And now we have, um, well, Perth Mon School against Applecross, and um, we are, are, I don't know what's happening. Wait. Uh, we're making a new lobby by the looks of it. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we do apologize about this, guys. Uh, technical issues, welcome to Oceana. I believe that's uh, typically what we always end up bringing uh, to the table anyway, so technical issues. So hopefully it'll only be a few minutes before we do load ourselves into the first uh, pick and ban phase. Now, uh, pro, eight, patch 8.16, I believe we're currently sitting on. Yes. And the meta, I mean, Oceano has always had its own little flavor of meta, and especially with the high school esports league, we've always had our own little taste of, you know, what the players love to run and what the players are rocking out. And are we going to see any of the changes in 8.16 really impact uh, this particular series, or is it going to be more just a bit of the same? Oh, I'll be completely honest. Yes, we are. Um, key things that we've got to note. Um, Aatrox. So, Aatrox was still strong, and he did get he did get one more nerf, so he's not... He doesn't win every matchup now. Um, it's like, he's... So he's been nerfed over the last few patches because he got so strong. He was so... Uh, he was just so dominant. Um, but... If we look at the side, another one is like Fizz. Fizz got overbuffed, and we saw Cloud9's Jensen abuse the newly powered Fizz. Um, Oriana trimmed a bit, a little bit less safer in lane against other AP mids. Quinn. Oh my god, where do I start with Quinn? Quinn has been gutted from his from the base uh, over the last few patches, from the base stats and like that, to even the electrocute nerfs that came in this patch. Champions like Rakan, less tanky. Talia, less movement speed. Just the list goes on in Trindemir, on hit Trindemir, with AP on hit Trindemir was so powerful. They had to just, they had to nerf his cooldowns, otherwise, he could just stick to people forever. And it's like, he just, he just wouldn't die. He'd stick to you, attack you 50,000 times, and you had no hope. So, quite, this has been a patch of nerfs nonstop this, uh, lately. Exactly, a little bit of downgrading is unfortunately, Jackson, your microphone is, uh, stutting, stuttering a little bit as we are. Loading our cells into hopefully this first game of the series. Um, I mean, if you look down the patch line up the series, I think the biggest thing that's going to hit um, these particular players, if I can load up the patch, my 
client is not a huge fan of me. The one change that this patch that caught my eye, at least, at least was the Trundle uh, damage on the Q. So basically, Trundle is no longer the, the S, well, S-tier jungler that he was treated as for the last couple of patches. So Trundle was a monster. Um, you didn't have to build damage on him. You could just <clears throat> build him support. Or you go full carry mode, and you could just build, build damage, build your uh, armor, and just pretty much you just either way, either way you played him, it's in the jungle. He was just so dominant. Um, pick and ban. If you didn't build him tank, that's okay. You could steal everyone else's tanky stats and be dominant. Um, if you wanted a support build, you could go your uh, um, Zeke's convergence and just buff your ADC while still being tanky. If you wanted to carry, he could do that too. He was just so utilizable, and he had quite a bit of CC, amazing jungle clear, and decent ganks, as well as having that beefy tank front line and that gap closing ability with his speed, as well as a split push threat. So he was just a full package, and he needed to just, he just needs to be, uh, well, just trimmed a bit, to be honest. Exactly, but also, something that happened this patch, and this, I think, is more going to impact uh, the niche level of plays, was the Tom Kench changes. So. I mean, I'm not expecting a Tom Kench support necessarily in this, unless it's like a very, unless it's like an in meta thing. So someone's constantly picking Thresh or constantly picking Morgana, and it's like, you know what, we can handle this Tom Kench. But Tom Kench top, that poor little, that poor little catfish. I mean, I would love to see a Tom Kench top. You don't have to see anything top lane unless it's a Darius or a Yasuo. I mean, that's when you ban the Darius, right? Because I mean, I would be very surprised if yes if da- the likes of darius as it appears we are uh migrating lobby wants some more so uh, it looks like i'd be very surprised if they're planning to use a the phrase i picked up is potato tank in that top lane i would be very very surprised if they leave open the something like the darius because darius i mean we've all played a potato tank into darius and mm-hmm. just seen how Brutally painful that matchup is, right? Yeah. So, so, <clears throat> um, so we are joining another lobby. Yep. Um, give me two seconds. So, what happens with um the Darius is Darius just snowballs a lane and then just applies pressure. Then he one v twos, one v threes, and I'll be honest, I was playing a few Darius games today. He's a a, a mate, an insane champion to play against. Absolute nightmare. Definitely. I mean, play, playing against Darius, it's like you can't afford to trade with him early because he kills you, and you can't afford to really let him scale because even scaling, again, as I said, against some fl- what we nicknamed the potato tanks, he just straight up destroys them. So it's it's quite a fun little matchup. I would be genuinely shocked if they left the likes of the Darius um, open and. I've been speaking to some high-level uh, casters even, of the likes of uh, Preacher, who I believe does the OCS and the OPL. And Dr. Mundo uh, is spiking up there in terms of popularity, in terms of just how strong he is. He brings damage, he brings crowd control, even merely to a minor effect. He's great into tanks, he's great into bruises. The one issue with playing Mundo, which is sort of why Mundo isn't, de- like, you know, certainty as it is that Darius pickup. So I'd be very surprised to see Darius get through pick and ban if I'm being entirely honest with myself. And then once you have gotten rid of the likes of Darius and I don't see a reason why we wouldn't see, for example, a Dr. Mundo top and then just because this patch is is the rise of tanks. Yep. So honestly the uh Dr. Mundo top, it's Dr. Mundo is an absolute menace in top lane right now. Um his traditional counter, champions like Darius um there's no longer a counter he out heals the darius damage he has so much damage in his kit already that he can fight the darius the only real way that you can find a champion that can fight him one of you one is if with is with enough life steal so a champion like warwick maybe the olaf maybe if you get something with the death dance and are able to survive his initial onslaught of damage so if you have a tanky duelist like uh maybe fiora even you have to find somebody that can out heal or uh, out out duel the Mundo. Otherwise, Mundo is just like literally runs out an entire team and just decimates. Exactly. So, but on that note, I, I'd be surprised to see the Doctor Mundo ban because there are 
Like, yes, he is extremely agitating to deal with, but there are ways to deal with Mundo. Like, you um, can just bring an Ignite to lane, for example, uh, Marilla Nomicon and even Electrocution as Culling are the not issue with, items, but usable. The issue with uh, Mundo now is that in the past, you dealt, you brought those items or those abilities or everything like that to handle the Mundo, uh, to deal with the Mundo. Now it's literally barely handling it because pre-buffs to his ultimate, um, what, it would, what would happen is you'd use this, you'd have this insane healing factor in Mundo that's pretty much cut in half, and then it's like, Mundo's like, ah, I'm just chilling out here. Now it's Mundo doesn't die or has no chance of dying unless you bring it here. It's like, literally, that brings it down to roughly the same level as it was before, uh, without dam uh, healing reduction before. So, it is definitely, it's, it's just so unfathomable, like, how you deal with a, a Mundo. Like, it's, I guess there's way, the way to deal with Mundo is keep him down in lane, make sure he doesn't scale, but he has such high base stats in damage, and when his health gets low, as, his, as it does with his ultimate, he gets extra base stats because of his uh, E, which is his, um, is it sadism or masochism? Uh, his masochism is... Is the and the ultimate is sadism so we'll have to see how they get through as we are finally loaded ourselves into pick and ban for this first game between perth modern school and applecross senior high school team a and the first ban drum roll come on give me the darius ban over talking damn it it's the ari <coughs> okay so ari very strong laner very safe laner as well and one of the things that a lot of people overlook with the blue and red side picks is blue you get priority first pick so you get to, so if you if something's left up that you really want, you locked it in hardcore. The thing that a lot of people don't do on red side though is you have that last pick specifically as a counter, and that's that's what you want to do. That's how you want to play it. And a lot of people don't utilize that red last pick for the counter pick. Exactly. I mean, <coughs> if you have something that is that strong, like I say, counter picks are hugely important when you're aiming for the. A very specific matchup. I think to myself, when I play uh, ranked, I do my best to get last pick because a lot of champions that I've used are very matchup dependent. I think of my Nasus, for example. You do not want to pick that into something like a uh, Kled or a Darius. So or a Teemo is or a Teemo. Yeah, using that last pick is extremely important. So we'll see if Applecross is able to use that. As we look at the band list, and it isn't a huge surprise. I mean, you look at Applecross's bands too very feast or famine style champions that you just do not want to let roll in. yes indeed and of course with the aurelia and yasuo it's they're two massive playmakers as well as for masi i do believe ikajo is a masi -yi god in high elo and we have the lord of bugs himself mordekaiser oh i um, mean this is this is the deal with the mordekaiser nunu bottling strategy that i've been hearing about in uh Oh, yeah, it's that's been floating around a few elos. It's and it's very annoying to deal with. So yeah, new new Mordekaiser. Yep, yeah, I've seen that work amazingly. Um, yes, everyone plays it. Yes. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and the last one taken away is Zin Zhao. So, so keep another champion that has hit the bandits. Now, using this first pick, do they want to try lock themselves in a super strong mid laner? Or are they going to think to themselves, let's pick something like a support where they can't really read where we're aiming for our team to go? Well, it's it's always curious. So it's like the Kai'Sa is very strong in this case because still a very strong ADC, amazing scaling. And even after the Gwinsu's nerfs, uh, you still do have the Stormraiser possibility. Uh, so Stormraiser allows for, your, uh, allows for this amazing initial power spike. And Kai'Sa scales like a god still as the game goes on. So very good pickup early here, very good lock-in. And of course, Trundle, we haven't, we did not stop talking about him for half a year now. <laughs> exactly, we mentioned Trundle earlier uh, before this cast began about how Trundle jungle just isn't as high damage dealing as it you know, previously has been, but Chili Exile doesn't give a damn. He thinks that this Trundle is still the, still the way to go and more than likely gonna end up going for that, you know, Knight's Val, very tanky build, but if they blind pick a LeBlanc, that's that's risky. Um, so apparently the Mord is okay because Perth Modern School checked in late. The Mordekaiser is a non-ban. 
Um, oh, no, it's the Mordekaiser in the new lane, dude. Oh, yeah, Mordekaiser. Oh, 100%, 100%, yeah. So they're worried about the Mordekaiser. So, <laughs> nah, so the Mordekaiser is a non ban because they talked to the other team. And the other team said, yeah, sure, ban Mordekaiser because we aren't using that because we can't handle the power of Mordekaiser Nunu. Exactly. It's, it's simply too powerful for them to handle with. But what they can handle with is the man bear pig himself, Udia, locked in for Eco J. His Master Yi's taken away, but he's gotten himself another damn powerful carry juggler. Yep, so Udir, amazing clear, but it's very, very niche, oh. very kiteable. Oh my god, This can this day get any better? We are going down a dark path. We have the Udir jungle, now the Zed mid lane, into the LeBlanc. This, oh. this mid lane is going to snowball out of control both ways. Like, if you've ever played LeBlanc versus Zed, if LeBlanc gets ahead, she destroys Zed anytime his shadow oh is Oh my god, what is this? What is this game? Um, okay, okay, I think I figured this out. So it's LeBlanc middle more than likely, because you can snowboard lane. Nidalee yeah, niche? Yeah, nid it'll be Nidalee jungle, and the Trundle will either be support or top, most likely top. I do like the idea of the flex, though. That flex is pretty cool, because it means that if you're if you're going to run a tank on the side of Perth Modern, Trundle wins that matchup every single time. If you're going to run something squishy, they can still have that. They still have access to that last hit. Yeah, they still have access to that last pick, so they can lock themselves an AD carry in for Navis, uh, the AD carry player for Applecross after the second ban phase, and then they get to use that last pick, which we were talking about before. They're going to utilize that really, really well, assuming these are the mind games we're expecting. Yep. So we do have the um. So with the Jana that. Cancels out a lot of hyper carry uh, potential right there. A lot of peel as well. So it allows for it's pretty much Udia is a very kiteable champion, and Zed is one of the champions that can actually get screwed over quite a bit by the uh, sorry by the Janna just popping that ultimate. And <clears throat> it's so Janna's a really good ban here. As for the misfortune, it's. <sighs> Misfortune's a scary champion, let's admit it. There's no one likes to go up against Misfortune. But Okay. Paris. This is this is starting to get really weird, okay? So the potential here for a poke comp with kill potential from LeBlanc. It's is there, there though. Exactly. It's cause you have the virus. If you go to the Thali virus with Comet, you have so much poke potential. You have a lot of poke with Nidalee, and then you engage, and next thing you know, Trono and LeBlanc just run on in with the Varus ultimate. Nidalee can dive in as well. So you see them land a few pot shots, and then do it from there. So, exactly. Oh, that's that's terrifying, because we also know that Varus's new build is Lethali piercing arrow poke instead of the on-hit style it used to be. So that's... It's actually a bit of half and half. Team fight wise the on-hit is still so much more powerful. And in most cases, it's actually better, but... If you're going for more of a niche poke style, it works. And that is... Wait, but then you have the Lulu, which goes to the Hyper oh, yeah, Carry. Trundle top. Yeah, Trundle top with Nidalee jungle, because they picked an Ornn into Trundle, which Trundle... I know for a fact Trundle struggles early, but once he gets his tier mat um, and should go into the Ravenous Hydra, he wins that matchup, because Trundle is yep. Trundle. <laughs> but <that's... laughs> I've got, no, got no analysis for that than Trundle's... Yeah, just... Nothing else you can really say about that matchup aside from Trundle is Trundle. Exactly. But, Trundle but is Trundle. At, the, at the end of the day, though, Orin is Orin, and that is a massive engage tool right there. That call the uh, Forge God just ram. It's it's pretty much just like signal the charge as soon as you hear the horn. It's like, yep, yeah, okay, someone's going down. Exactly. Um, you Lulu, hear the horn, you'd better be gone. Yeah, Lulu <laughs> Varus though. That's quite interesting because. Lulu is can make anyone else a pseudo tank with the ultimate and is amazing with um I absolutely amazing with uh yeah it's, it's amazing with Varus like the on hit Varus because it just boosts them up with any hyper carry really so quite an impre quite an impressive uh, lineup quite a weird lineup where you can see it go a few different ways um from Apple Cross whereas Perth Modern School seem to be have a very we're going to get in your face and we're going to destroy you kind of comp. Definitely. But the one thing I have to question about Applecross is they saw the Morgana support coming in out of catch there, and yet they still go for a Lulu. Well, I would say, I would argue the fact that maybe Tom Kench, I mentioned it during uh, Pick and Ban while we were talking before the match began, that 
Tom Kench is like the pick against Morgana. So hopefully Navis and uh, Panj can actually dodge the Dark Bindings because if they get hit by those, yeah, Lulu can make a pseudo tank out of Varus, but realistically, if Kaisa all ins and with Udia support, with Udia backing them up as well, that's a hell of a dead Varus. Now, you want to know who Tom Kench is the counter to? Isn't it like Rakan or something? Ash. Oh god, yeah, you're right. That's Ash. Oh, that's disgusting. And do you wanna do you wanna know who the counter to Tom Kench is? And this is gonna surprise you. This definitely will. What is it? Zach. Oh god, you're right, because the late spouse yeah. pulls the Tom Kench even if he's devoured them. And the stretching strikes as well. You hit the Tom Kench and then you hit someone else and you bring the Tom Kench with whoever is with back towards you. So it's and I had to think about this for a while. I was like thinking about it. it's like it's like because Tom Kent seemed like such oh I know I felt like he was abusable with his um escape. Like it felt so one dimensional and it like seemed so foolproof. It's like you have to focus on him, but then he's so tanky. It's like no, you don't have to focus on him. You just have to bring him back into the fight because he's because you bring him back, you bring someone else back with him. So that. and so Tom Kent, it's like it's it's interesting champion, but so exploitable if people see it coming. It's like cool, okay, cool. They have an Ash. Oh yeah, pick Tom Kent. And then we pick the Zach. It's like, and it's... <laughs> it's just like... Tom Kench becomes more of a hindrance to the team than a help, as we will be loading ourselves into the game in only about 45 seconds. And, Pro, we see the pick and ban for the first game, and I must ask you now, as I think I do every single time we are loading ourselves into a game, we see the matchups, we can see the champions. Who do you have faith to take game number one in this best of three series? Oh, it's very difficult. Um... But I have to say, oh, it's... okay. At the end of the day, okay. If we if we look if we break this if we break it down, the split push is won by in Orn Trundle. Split push is won by the Trundle, but the advantage goes to Orn. Team fighting is better for the Trundle. There's two tanks that Trundle can uh, use subjugate on. All in all, I like the team comp of Apple Cross better, but. Yeah, I'm from Perth. There's something about Perth Modern School. I've just, I just, I just have this faith in them that they're going to win this. It's, it's so, it's so difficult to call this, but I reckon Perth Modern School is going to get at that early lead and they're going to win it. Even though I do like the idea, like I, I, I like the team comp, um, of Apple Cross better. I just think that they're not going to be able to utilize it properly, and it's going to be absolutely chaos where Perth Modern School's comp. Is gonna win out. I, I don't know. It's first game of today, so of this series. So I reckon, I reckon Chaos is gonna win. Perth Modern School. Uh, well, I'm afraid I do have to disagree with you uh, on this one. I know it's a bit of a shock here. Um, oh, I know. I, I see Perth Modern School's comp, and I do quite like it. But I have one glaring issue with it. They have no ability power in their team. They have Zed, and they have Kaiser. Now Kaiser, yes, does go for a bit of a hybrid build. But I'm still worried that against the likes of a Trundle, you're just you can't kill Trundle, and if you commit to someone else, the Nidalee and the and the LeBlanc will get Zonya's Hourglass, so you can't kill them. And you go for the Varus, well then there's Wild Growth and there's a Polymorph waiting for you to go in when you're one of these, you know, high damage carries. So it just I'm worried that if they don't get a massive snowball early phases, that Perpmon school with this Double AD style simply won't be able to get ahead, and then Apple Cross will just be able to survive it, live their way through it. And as you said earlier, the split push goes in favor of this Trundle. So I have faith in the Trundle up in that top side to you know take control of the map. As unfortunately, we have a bit of a pause before we load in. Uh, although it's actually quite curious. So um, interesting with both the Udir and the Zed is that they can both split push really well and. On the side of Applecross, there's no one who can really 1v1 either of them. There's maybe enticements, but against a Zed, Zed has so many items that he can do. More items on the AD side that can help you against the AP, rather than what, like, enticement can do. Enticement pretty much gets the Zonyas, um, and that's about it. As for the Zed, he's got the GA, he's got the uh, more of Mammortius, he does have the, uh, the QSS that builds into the... Uh, what is that item called again? The one that QSS Mc came uh, Mercurial, Mercurial Scimitar? Yeah, that's the one. Um, so, and so you do have Ikaja and Playmaking also being able to do that split push pressure, which is what they're really good at. And they can 
shove down those waves really hardcore. And they both have quite a bit of movement, uh, mobility to get around the map quite fast. So as long as people don't force fights, and then it's going to be, it's, then they should be fine. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite an interesting thing based on like how it goes. And as for Kaisa, if they really want to, because they, they know their weakness to this and they know this trundle is pretty much going to be the main tank. Um, so what if, what if the the plan is to just like to go the traditional AP Kaisa? You have a weaker early game, but your scaling is still phenomenal, and that's where Kaisa excels. I mean, it can work. I won't disagree with that one. Like, the, if you do go for the AP Kaisa, which I believe is the more popular style right now, although I do know the I think Stormraiser Rush into yeah, Stormraiser Rush is still popular, but you can definitely go for the AP like Nash's. Nash's tooth and such, so it can work, but I'm I'm a, a personal level. I'm not a huge fan of it. And also, if they go for AP Kaiser, enticement has a basically free kill on Hansen Hassan for majority of the game because he's not building magic resistance, and then playmaking needs to keep enticement down before enticement one shots Hansen Hassan. So. It's it's a bit of a slippery slope either way you look at it, I feel. Oh, 100%. This is looking like a snowball -y game, to be honest. Uh, you have pretty much hyper carries with snowball champions. And um, <laughs> you have Exile, Ikajo, Playmaking, Enticement, all champions that want to get ahead. They want to do work early. They want to make that impact there. But... <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know, it's just, it can go so many ways based on how this early game goes, because it will get to a point where Novice and <laughs> Hassan are not going to have any peel. They really aren't. It's going to, uh, there's limited peel to how much is actually going to be diving them. Oh yeah, no, definitely. But I said, they have a little bit of peel with uh, Pandaren's uh, Lulu and uh, Katach's, uh, I'm, I'm assuming I butchered the pronunciation of that name as I do every name. The Morgana, but yeah, outside of that, like the LeBlanc's going to be diving, and then the Black Shield needs to be on point. Udi is not going to get a bear stand slap, let's be real of ourselves. And Orn's Orn Horn is simply too slow to catch LeBlanc. But again, on the other side, who's stopping the Zed other than a polymorph from Lulu? So it's so it's one of those things where it's like with the with Akajo, it's if you think about it, Udi is actually a really good counter to the LeBlanc because Akajo just needs to like stand next to. A priority target and if leblanc comes in instant bear slap simple as that so enticement has to be very careful with the targets he picks making sure that he's you not out i'm afraid uh pro oh apologies can you hear me now yeah i can hear you now you're loud you're loud and clear okay sweet so um funnily enough with enticement he's actually got a little bit of a counter here you got the morgana binding with the black shield and you also have ikajo now enticement goes in uh, if he goes onto a priority target who's next to a Kaiju, instant bear slap. Stunned up, can be turned on, absolutely decimated. Um, Kathach, same thing. You use the binding, uh, you have the black shield, you have so much protection against the Sablanc. So, really good pick here as well. So, so much potential there. So, it really depends on how do they utilize these picks. Because uh, at the end of the day, Udyr, if Udyr can't get the flash bear slap down, He's just going to rely on running towards them or the counter engage, which, let's be honest, Exiled and Enticement want to engage and they're squishy. If they get locked down, they're going to get burst. Exactly, which is a bit of a worry because I, I have not seen a Jungle Nidalee in the longest of times. And when Jungle Nidalee was the meta, if I, memory serves me correctly, Jungle Nidalee was all about invading the enemy jungle and getting yourself ahead of them in comparison, as we see in Tyson being a little bit cheeky. So, Exiled is sort of expected to be invading Ikajo, and maybe it's just me, I admittedly don't play a whole lot of jungle, I don't think that actually Exiled wins that if unless if he's not the one getting the drop on Ikajo. Yep, and of course Ikajo has a much faster clear as well, and a healthy clear at that too, so it's... It, it can't, uh, with with the Udyr, you want to you get pretty much just power farm like crazy. Um, your ganks aren't that strong unless you have good setup and people are overextended. But then if you do, you have so much damage and so much burst, uh, so much damage and so much um 
lockdown that you can just stay on them. You outrun them. You have a stun. And your your Tyra stance has so much burn as well as so much base damage. So it's really just a question of like it's if a Kaja can utilize these advantages he's got or whether he's gonna be exploited for it. Dude, we'll have to find that out as it looks like both junglers are just content to be sitting in their own uh, jungle for a little while, both on the top side of the map, one clearing the Raptors and the other one hanging out. Uh, hidden away on poor old Gromp, you know, he's had, he's had a rough time today, Gromp, so we'll have to see how that goes for him, but they both appear to be looking bottom side, and realistically, that's why I think both junglers should try and force an advantage there, because outside of the overcharge from Hassan's Kai'Sa, there's actually not a whole ton of mobility coming out of the bottom lane. Sure, you have the Black Shield, but Black Shield doesn't stop damage, so I would love for Exiles Nidalee here to force a gank, particularly because look how far pushed up they are. Yeah, exactly, and of course, Exile is here as well, they go into him. The Exile looks like they want to try to catch on to the Morgana, the Piercing Arrow, not enough. Exhaust being popped out super early on, Spear lands, Flash coming, has it! Oh! Managed to get the heal out at the last possible second, and someone is burnt, but they get out alive. Yeah, and of course, right there, only the Exhaust was burnt from Pandaren, but you have all summoner spells, but the Flash from Hasten being burnt as well. Amazing gank right there, burning so many summoner spells, so much kill pressure. Oh, Exiled. Exiled wants round two. Black Shield comes up for Hasten. Oh, lovely dark finding. In fact, Exiled run. Oh, he gets out alive with... I don't think he deserved to get alive on that one. He has so little health. Oh, and that was so close right there, and really... Honestly, Kathach right there was the MVP of that, right? Uh, he was able to, like, do the Dark Binding, was, do, uh, uh, was able to put out the Black Shield, and it just pretty much just was just ensure they both got out of their life. And it was, like, it was literally just the difference between, like, a double kill right there and, well, nothing, pretty much. Exactly, no kills, which is exactly what happened. But while all of that happened, we didn't get to see it with camera, but there was a gank Ikajo while his bottom lane was being attacked, decided to visit the mid lane, and enticement was actually forced to burn a flash to get out of there alive, but didn't die, but with that flash down on enticements LeBlanc, like, that's an issue, because in an assassin v assassin matchup, the flash is so important. Mm, yeah, split second decision making, you have so much burst damage, you don't have a lot of tanky stats to work with, so there's not a lot of margin for error in these assassin v assassin lineups, but of course, not only was the flash burnt from enticement, but Ikaja's flash was burnt as well. So there's that flash bear slap gone. That's a massive tool that Ikaja can no longer use. Uh, so quite problematic there, but we'll see how that goes. Um, it does look like Exile might be trying to like play around bot side still, trying to get like this bot side rolling, and just so pushed up again. Indeed, but it doesn't look like they can do anything. A bit telegraphed and good warding as the enticement having a little bit of fun in that mid lane, but I, it does look like they do want to play around bottom side. We can see there's a control ward sitting just up above the red buff for the favor of Apple Cross, which tells me that's the line that they want Exile and Enticement to be able to walk down and get that bottom line on bottom lane online. So I'm smelling very bottom lane focused. They want to get Navis ahead. And more importantly, I think they want to keep Hassan's uh, down as we see enticement hit level six, ignite down, and that's a straight up easy solo kill. Yep, and of course, right there, the assassin, the assassin enticement was just able to shred playmaking right there. And it's that's the issue if you overstep your boundaries, if you do, do something, if you're not, if you're not expecting like pretty much that burst damage to come in. You make a mistake, the margin for error on these assassin uh, matchups is so small. You make one Exile. small misplay. Exile's down here again. He really wants to make a point down here. Like, this is bottom lane focus. Like, this is just screaming. We're going to just be camping this lane. Like, this is the third time he's been down here. It's, it's just, you know, you know, you know, when you're in solo queue and you're like, you're pretty much, you're playing a game. This is the enemy jungler and your and your jungler is like focusing another lane or like not ganking or something like that, you know? So, <laughs> Ikajo is focusing on farming. He's got himself a sizable CS lead up against Exile, who's been focusing on bottom lane. And it's, so far, it's paying its dividends because so far he has not actually, you know, he's made one attempt again. Oh, Deathmark coming out to play, making. Is he able to land the Shuriken? No, the Deathmark will not be able to kill Enticement. So, 
I really like the fact that playmaking. Oh my god, Flash coming out from Exile. He really wants to force this. Playmaking isn't so much trouble. One more pounce. Can the Cougar sit her claws? And yes, she can. And that's an easy pickup. Ikaju now trying to do his best, but Flash coming out gets rooted up. One more hit will do it. Ikaju falls to the auto attack of LeBlanc. And oh, that was absolutely devastating right there. And of course, Enticement is getting that early lead. And of course, this is like a 0 2 Z. This is not where you want to be. He doesn't even have. The second, uh, he doesn't even have the Caulfield's hammer. He's only got, like, serrated Dirk. Um, and this is a little Blanc. He's got a Dark Seal. Two and O. Oh. That's, he's just, he's just so big right now. And he's going to be able to start roaming, getting his advantages, and pushing him into the side lane. So he, his bottom lane's been pushed up for the better part of eight minutes. So he wants to try and roam down there and get these free kills that are pretty much being offered to him. And unfortunately... It's and this is the same. This is the issue with Zed. Zed is not actually able to do what he wants to do in regards to this matchup. Simply because he's like he's he's getting shut down. He's getting destroyed. He's getting he's getting killed left, right, and center. And without the lead, he's got no lane pressure. And he's got no kill potential. Uh, and if you can't push in the wave, you can't roam. If you uh, if you do roam, oh, that was so close. Dear LeBlanc enticement trying to force a fight up in that middle lane. As you see, the two top laners just jigging it out. Trundle has picked himself up the fear mat. So that's now the, that's basically top lane in favor of it. As he's just going to be able to constantly shove it in and just gale up insanely well. So as you see, Rogue, I mean, he's trying to take the fight here, but no support. So Trundle has stuff to get. That's a horrible idea. His enticement. Uh oh. Ikajo. Oh, lovely black shield there, stopped to change the corruption. Actually, Polymer being forced out of Pandra, he could have flashes, flashes his way in there, but unfortunately, Enticement claims himself his third kill of the game. Hassan uses that killer instinct to get himself out of there. Lovely dark fighting will keep them locked out. The spear catches it to the face, but manages to get out alive anyway. So it's like one of those things where you're like reading those uh those comics and everything like that, where, or you're reading those stories like, oh, and he... he he blocks this attack, or he blocks that attack. It's like, you can just imagine a, a, if they wrote a fight scene, like, oh, and he goes, he goes for the haymaker, and so I decide to block it with my chin. It's like, Basically. does that mean? It's like, it's like, it's like, oh yes, I'm, I'm blocking it with the exact part of my body he wants to hit. <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate ruse. You block it with the things that they're not expecting you to block it with, and therefore they aim for your head. If you dodge it and hit it with your, actually, I don't know. I'm trying to. I have no idea where I'm going with that one to be enticement. <laughs> you know what? Enticement's going. Enticement's going for that mid lane. And that was one combo without the Ignite use. Playmaking. He needs help. He needs yeah. help in this mid lane. Oh, he is getting absolutely decimated. It's, uh, it's just one thing after another at the moment. He's getting... It's... Like, literally, like, LeBlanc and Zed are in, in many ways, they're AD and AP versions of each other. Slight differences, obviously. But just it's just becoming such a problem for Zed in the mid lane. He's he's had to actually go for a null magic mantle this early on just to survive this lightning phase. He hasn't got his boots. He hasn't got he's got a Corfield's Warhammer. He's got a serrated Dirk. But it's he needs to scale up. And in the one v one, he does outscale the LeBlanc. But it doesn't matter because a little bit as Rogue Phoenix is in a tad bit of trouble. He calls for the Forge God to save him, but uh. Well, Exiled Nips take no prisoners, it seems. Yeah, Exiled is exiling everyone else, as he does take two tower shots for no reason whatsoever. Smart I mean, after, after how active he's mean, he can make a few mistakes. That's on three no. and four. Uh, that's four tower hits for no reason. Exiled, come on, buddy. You can do better than this. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is, this is the Nidalee curse, you know? Yeah, but exactly. This is the castle curse when we say they're doing well, and then they uh, make a few of the nipsies. But that is first turret falling on the side, on the top side of the map in favor of Apple Crest. Now, without looking at the gold values, bro, I want you to guess how much ahead enticement is over playmaking 10 minutes into the game. Hey, who and who? Oh, enticement uh, and playmaking. Yeah, mid, mid lane matchup. Uh, I'm gonna guess, look at that. That's at least 1300. That's about 1300, yeah. 1400 gold. Oh, wait, what? Really? Yeah, 1400 oh. gold. They're sitting on 3100, 3200 gold now, and LeBlanc is sitting at 4600 gold, so. Yeah. Cause he got he got first blood, so yeah, I didn't account for that. My bad. Oh my lord, enticement! If he lands this chain, flash ignite Deathmark coming out, but it's not going to be enough. The ignite burns him down. Cool enticements don't look at exploding Zeds. 
I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Man. <laughs> that's that's a report. That's a report right there. <laughs> yeah, that's my report. That's exactly what it was. He did the most. Like I love. Le I love the new. I love the LeBlanc coming back to what she was because you can make all these flashy highlight plays. She's no longer a control mate. She's back to the good old days of assassin LeBlanc, and I have fallen back in love with that champion. And watching her play, she's got she's got a two level lead that she got on her own. And she's enticement Leblanc is damn well terrifying. I'm I'm in love. Oh, it's it's honestly, and but we do have oh, uh, <laughs> a spear coming out from X up in the backside. I don't think. Oh, lovely dark binding polymer coming out onto the Varus, but he is not surviving that one. Soul shackles does lock them out, and now Phoenix is in the back line. XL gets knocked up and taken down. A double kill coming in for Ijok, who's uh he's redeemed himself for his earlier struggles this game. But while that happened. Yeah, you know, Isaac gets a free push up on top lane. It could threaten the tier two. Is of course it does mean that he is going to be a. Uh, they are going to threaten the tier one in the bot side as well, and Isaac doesn't actually have a massive uh, head start on them, so they are going to get the tower. And if he keeps threatening this, they could just keep pushing for that second tower because they are a form hand down here right now. Exactly, but it looks like they are backing up. Someone needs to go deal with that Trundle who will be hitting that tier two. He is going for. My personal favorite build of uh, try Trinity Force for the top lane, so he's going to pick up the Hydra of some kind, the Trinity Force, and then he just goes full tank, and that is an unkillable... Yeah, this is the free turret. This is the issue with Trundle. He does deceptively amount large amounts of damage, as that is the tier 2 falling for the top for the side of Perf Modern School. They're now down to two, tur two turrets to one. At the end of the day, that was a work play, because they did get two kills onto a struggling lineup, and also got a tower. So if they trade tower for tower for the next 20 minutes, that is fine for them because they're going to slowly scale back up and pretty much 3,000 gold now is irrelevant at, at, at 40 minutes. True, but they've got to get to 40 minutes, which is going to be hard with Rift Herald falling. And I would be genuinely shocked if A, Perth Modern School is able to contest this Rift Herald. And then uh, alongside that B, as it seems we were having a short pause, B, if they don't use this turret to crack the last, to crack the middle lane turret and open up the map, because I feel like Navis and Pan on that bottom side can break open that turret whenever they choose to do so. Yes, and it's 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 getting to that point where it's you gotta you gotta think like, what are you willing to give up in order to get certain objectives? Like that's that's how uh, Perth Modern School have to think about this game. It's. Are they willing to give up a tower to the Trundle if they can get some a play to help and elsewhere? They are going to lose this Rift Child. Can they get something in return for that pressure? Uh, at the moment, it looks like no because they've got they've lost the pressure in top side. They have to clear that out, otherwise they lose more gold. Um, Kaiser is now farming mid lane, to trying to get like to trying to funnel into the Kaiser, get the Kaiser past the early phase. And Kaiser is actually even going the Gwinsu, so she is going the AP on hit build to make up for the lack of AD damage and the scaling. On that champion, or the AP on here is insane. It is, but allow me to raise you something that is more insane. The fact that Varus is actually ahead and doing the exact same thing. I was going to say a Fed LeBlanc can one-shot you no matter what damage build you're going for, but that is also technically valid as the Rage Blade is coming out from Navis's. So he's going for the on-hit style over the poke style, which has been the more popular in the higher you know realms today, but... Everyone has their own little style, and I am much more a fan of watching people do their own style than, you know, mimicking what is uh, meta. So, Rift um, going to fall. Oh, sorry, go. Uh, it's, it's on that note. It's so if 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 this if that is your if that is your opinion. So, I played a game today. I was Darius into Nasus. Ouch! I feel sorry for that Nasus already. I was ADCS up at fourteen minutes. Yep. Um, and then the Nasus proceeds to first item by a Storm Razor, then a Bloodthirster. Okay. And I spent the rest of the game 3v1ing and winning the 3v1s. I mean, so, he was trying his best. Kind of. So is that, is that his style, or...? Uh-oh. Kenny, you cannot... Oh! <laughs> that was... Nearly a straight up one shot. That this was LeBlanc. this little blog is huge right LeBlanc now, and that's sitting on two K gold, dude. Like that's before, LeBlanc, yeah, that's a Luden's like... echo. That was a Luden's echo. That's that's a one shot right there. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. 
Oh, Joke wants to try for some change of corruption is up and available. He finally chooses to throw it out, but it looks like Zed is here as well. The death mark onto the Lulu teleport coming out finally, but unfortunately it's a tad little too late as Idjok picks himself up. No apologies, playmaking picks himself up at quick kill, and now enticement wants to try for something on the bottom lane, but even with three on three, I don't think they should be able to force this. And of course, that is the teleport advantage they had that is now gone as uh, Rogue Phoenix keeps on pushing the top side. So they have to make something happen, which they are going to just get that tower. So I guess that's something. But of course, they may lose this top tower if the Auron can get enough damage onto it. But he's a very slow pusher because he's just a full tank. Exactly. No damage items. Looks like he's actually going for the Abyssal Mask as a first item. So slowly whacking away with his horn hammer. But... Uh, if he backs away now, that turret's going to be staying up, so that's going to be another turret falling in favour of Applecross, while Perth are really struggling to put the pieces together, so three turrets to one, and but only a 2k gold lead, given the fact that they are two kills and two turrets down, that's pretty good to be only 2k gold down. Mm. And you see the difference in games, so this is, um, this is Perth, Western Australia's uh, games obviously are a lot slower than um, Melbourne's games, which are at this point already about 20 or so kills at least so this is definitely the uh more slower macro orientated region um uh, as opposed to melbourne so it'll be interesting to see how these different styles clash uh when we get to the um when we get to the series finals where the uh interstate championships are held indeed we'll have to see where that goes as that is the second dragon of this game falling in favor of apple cross the first one was an infernal dragon that we uh didn't fully cover as it was falling. I believe a fight was happening at the time, but with two dragons down and a mountain dragon being the third one to pop up, Applecross, that's clearly the next objective for them, I feel. The next dragon popping up. Does Perth Modern School have almost a mini timer where they need to become relevant before that next dragon uh, or simply risk getting just straight up outscaled? That's the thing. It's like, the question is, do they get outscaled though? Because if you look at the side of... Um... Apple Cross. So even though they've got this great poke uh, combination team fight, at the end of the day, they're if enticement goes in, bear slap or binding locks them down hardcore. Uh, Exile goes in, same thing. Um, and then if you look at actual team fight engages, Rogue Phoenix uh -oh. 64. Uh oh, this is happening once again. I've seen history happen once, and I've seen history happen twice as Pandaren falls. To the combo of Ijok and unfortunately Navis will be falling himself as well. A little over pushed considering, look at the jungle. There is no vision. They had no idea that was coming. Oh, uh, and absolutely. Exiled. Oh, Exiled. You can't face tank a binding like that, friend. You're going to be eventually falling as playmaking flashes his way out of there. Enticement is doing his damage. Actually, playmaking falls to the LeBlanc. But no, that was apologies. That was Ijoko falling to the LeBlanc. Enticement has to jump his way out of there. But. A little unnecessary considering Applecross is ahead. They're doing a bit lazy with their vision job. Yes, and it's just, it's right there. We're slowly seeing these small advantages come back. But as I saying before, these team fights, they don't necessarily go in favor of Applecross because you do have the oh, Auron. No, it's coming out into Cassidy, so Enticement's not able to do that much damage, but it doesn't matter as the Trundle is damn well strong. That's the Electric coming out for an easy kill onto the Morgana. I'm not going to have onto the Trundle, who's the tankiest damn member. Playmaking tries to get his way in out of there, but with the Ghost Blade popped, he realizes, damn, I am not in position. My Ghost, my Death Mark is down, and he simply forces his way out of it. Yep, and right there we are seeing, um, it's Applecross is just slowly just, is, is not actually pushing this lead, just maintaining the lead, which can be quite problematic as the game goes on. It's still only a bit over 2,000 gold lead, with the Rift Child coming here in mid lane and that middle tower going before it comes in. This is a fully healthy Rift Child charging for that middle inner tower. Exactly, and Ikaja is doing his best, but actually, ah, uh, they will manage to keep the turret alive, admittedly, with very little health. But it looks like with Enticement on the bottom side of the map and Exiled poking around to try and steal a blue buff away. It feels like almost Perth Mon School are a tad bit scattered. Their members not exactly sure where they need to be. Oh, it's it can be quite problematic. And if you look at the Nidalee, like Exiled, he actually has picked up the Rod of Ages, so he is tankier. He's realized, wait, there's a high possibility of me getting burst and getting destroyed. So I need to be a bit tankier. I need to have more health. And so he's actually gone like one of the well, an amazing scaling item. So he's not exactly going to fall off anytime soon. 
As for this LeBlanc, how do you, how do you make a 6-0-0 LeBlanc full off? You have to just shut her down again and again and again and catch up to her. And that's how you keep the LeBlanc down. But the issue is when you're this far ahead, you got to void stuff already. you got to Sorcerer's Shoes. you got to Luden's Echo. It's There's nothing you can really do against this LeBlanc that'll be able to really keep the LeBlanc down. Uh, don't get caught by her chain is probably which, one of the best things you can do. Or simply don't be out of position. Like, which one? The first chain or the behind... second? Oh, huh? sorry. Uh, which chain? The first second chain or the second chain? Both chains. Both? That seems yeah. like a bit of an ask. It is, but if you position yourself properly when it comes to the fights or even the skirmishes, you should be fine because LeBlanc, like, yeah, we talked about it before, she doesn't want to distortion on top of or near someone who's near a Kojak. Because he can lock her down with bear stands and LeBlanc, for all her mobility, can't move when she's CC'd. So, you have to be, if you position yourself next to one of them, or you're near Rogue Phoenix, who can simply face tank the chain, you should be fine. As it looks, talking about face tanking, looks like Iza is in a quite a bit of trouble. Subjugate is not even needed as Hassan picks himself up an easy kill. Yeah, and this is where the kills want to be going. Oh, no, another Dark Binding land. The Chains of Corruption coming out in return, but there's only no support here. It's five versus three as... Enticement is trying to get access to the backline, but I think they know he's here. Never mind, he just deletes the Udia, but looks like they will get a shutdown. Hassan picks himself up that one XL, doing his best, but unfortunately the death mark as well as the killer instinct ensures that he goes down a double kill for this Kaiser 4 and 0 now. And all this setup on the back of Kutch's uh, Dark Bindings, this Morgana is an issue right now. And of course, with, uh, with Hassan being... 403, even though he's down about 50 CS, he's actually ahead in gold. The only member of his team who really is. So, oh, and, and the Udyr as well. So, if you actually look at the gold, the gold, uh, like where the gold's situated, aside from the mid lane, the gold's actually in really decent positions. You got a Kajo who needs to get that gold, get the tanky stats, get the damage stats so he can be relevant. And you have Hassan. Hassan wants gold like a madman. He is gold hungry. He needs to get that gold, he needs to get ahead, and he needs to build up his items. Because he's going to be the carry of this game, he's going to be the hyper carry. And he's already got his Nash's Tooth, he's got his Gwinsu's. He can probably get either Banshee's or Zonya's now, next, so he can stay alive whenever Enticement goes in. Because that is the big issue he's facing right now. Enticement can pop at any moment, Exiled can pop at any moment. And that's what he's going to be, got to be careful of. Exactly, but it looks like the next dragon is up and available, so we'll have to see who is careful and who gets popped as the mountain dragon is up and both teams are kind of setting up for it, but if it's his teleport up and available, this trundle is going to start split pushing and oh, Enticement is in a little bit of trouble. Tiger stands into bear stance, Enticement forced to jump away, misses Chain, still lands the second, Chain gets the heal, is he going to be able to survive? The spear landing out, the killer instinct as well, the flash as well, so he actually might be able to get there. Exiled, unfortunately, I don't believe he's gonna get that one. Yes, he does actually flash up, finding. Oh no, it lands onto the LeBlanc enticement. He's tricksy, but he's not tricksy enough. And once again, Hassan picks up a kill. They are funneling gold into him. They lose the mid tower for this, but of course, they may just be able to get the dragon. So, might be a decent trade. Exiled. Oh my lord, the exhaust comes out. Is he gonna save him? The death mark coming out. Is he gonna survive? One more hit will do it, but he doesn't take it. Exiled. Finally takes him down as playmaking falls, but so does the so does the jungler. Kazich is in quite a bit of trouble. This is a 2v1. Is he able to get the kill? Let's actually he's overcommitting for this one. I feel a little bit dark finding and an easy pick up. Hassan is gone from uh from a little bit nothing to dominating. Yes, he is 6-0-3. Not too long ago, he was like 1-0-3. And it's just going to keep him growing from here. He is pro he's going back. He's got his QSS. He has picked up his uh, Berserker Greaves. He is a bowling right now. There is... It is it's just so much power in the palm of one man. Can he handle it, though? 2,000 gold, the difference still at 24 minutes. But look at the towers, though. Five towers to one. This macro game from Apple Cross is paying off. They're getting the pressure, even though they're only winning by a small amount. They're winning in map pressure by a lot. They have objective control. They have so much roaming potential. And, uh, Pokemon's gonna have to really start opening up this map. Otherwise, they're always gonna be in the back foot whenever these plays happen. And they're gonna just be playing defensively. Exactly, but the turret falling up across has been getting caught out of position a little bit recently. We're seeing multiple times where someone's just not where they should be. Enticement once again just 
As I was saying, not where he should be, so a little bit aggressive there, nearly gets caught out of position, but does get out alive, as Perth Modern School might be looking at a Baron. I'd be very surprised if they did try and force it, but... Uh-oh, this is a death rush. Oh no. Oh, manages to dodge the Dark Binding, but it's not enough! The Flash comes out, call the Forge Gun does not get a knockoff, but that does not matter! As Navis is now locked up and taken down, a double kill coming in for the UD. The ants go marching one by one, and one by one they will be falling. That is three kills in favor of Perth Modern School after a very good death rush. Yep, yeah, and 6-0-6. Six, six. It's three assists more onto Hassan, and even though it's just assists, it is still gold in their pocket. They can't make much happen off this because of the lack of uh, map pressure, but it's still something. They're just playing catch-up right now, and they are getting the catch-up gold. 1,300 gold the difference. It's slowly bridging the gap. And it's... With this Uder, it is just being a pain. There's no one who can really deal with him in that 1v1 situation. Wherever he shows up, things are going to happen. They get away from him, and they have the Call of the Forge God just coming in. And that Ram is angry. Yeah. It's like, it's... it's you get off my property, and he runs at you. It's... it's what do you, How do you handle that? Well, the way you're meant to be handling that, I believe, is the crowd control. You have the chains coming out of enticement, you have the pillar out from it, and of course you have the chains of corruption, the polymorph, and the glitter lamps coming out of the bottom lane of Applecross, and it's not enough. They are not properly having the crowd control up and available for them, and they're not using it necessarily either, so it's a bit of an issue, but talking about an issue, they've just shown two members on the bottom side. If Perth Modern School don't try Force Baron right now, knowing that Navis and Pandaren have no way of contesting, I'm going to question why not, because you can force it down with the Fed Hassan and playmaking. You can definitely do this. One of the big issues that they're having, though, is you have so much dive potential. Oh, they're pinging it. Oh, yeah. my God. They went for the safe play of getting the tower. They're rotating for the uh, Baron. But, of course, they are going to lose the bottom tower for this. They do. If this is this is a 5v2 situation. Base. They need to force this down, and there is the potential for his steal. Exile is nearby. He has no flash up and available, so the enticement dancing around the outside that goes in. Is the Exile able to steal it? He gets knocked off. He steals the Baron! Are you kidding me? That should not be happening! The fight's going on now. It looks like they are able to clean up. It's a better for the buying time for the bottom lane. hitting away at the inhibitor line as it is. The tunnel is finally taken up, but that is the entire bottom lane. And more importantly, the Baron exiled, you beast of a man! Yeah, two, five, three, but all is forgiven, young man. Navis is actually going to try and force to end this, and here's a corruption coming out, and actually, oh, never mind. With both members backing away, I don't think they can force this. Three members up and available, now Navis and Pedro have to get out of there. Enticement is in a little bit of trouble, but Applecross, holy hell, that, you, you've, got to, you've got to give XL something special for his birthday this year, because that was a sexy-ass steal. Yes, indeed. There was a 3v5, and they stole it. In the meantime, they have the Novice and Pandaren playing the Yoko Yatos are just split pushing like crazy, and it's working. They are non-stop. They're just... They're, it's so much map pressure. There's... Every single time Applecross make a play, they have map pressure behind it. And Perth Modern School just don't have the same. They're just saying, okay, cool, we can go for this. They're not thinking ahead. They're being like, oh, this looks fun, that looks fun, this looks fun. Oh. But, it's like, it's not, if we do this, this happens. They don't have the cause and effect mindset of like, if we do this, they'll do that. If they're not, they're not foreseeing any of it, and it's quite problematic with how it is. And if they get into game two, this is one thing they're going to have to look at and be like, hey guys, we need to fix this up, because it's a big issue we're having. Definitely, Applecrest now have themselves a lovely time. They can set themselves up a 1-4 split push. You throw Trundle up in the top lane. With that Titanic Hydro, with that Subjugate up and available, there's no one who can stop him, especially with that Baron buff, but it looks like all hands are on deck to clear the middle section of the map. They want to crack over that inhibitor line, and Ico Jack is hanging out on the top side of the map. I don't know what he's doing up there, but that is surely going to be a free turret falling. The Udia finally on his way back down, but that is the, the inhibitor turret falling. The inhibitor is not long for this world, as that will fall as well. Enticement just able to zone them out now, and that's two bases down, and I'd be very surprised now if Applecross set just didn't, didn't decide to just go top, ram that final lane, and then try and force the game off that. And in addition, they could probably rotate for the Infernal Drake, which is about to come up. It's actually just coming up now. So, Hassan really has to step up. He's got a secret arm guard, but he needs to make the play of plays in order to ensure that his team actually uh, gets out of this alive. Um, 
Panda and it's... got abandoned at the at the blast zone. What a poor poor life, like, man. It's like oh, it's like it's like it's okay, guys. It's okay, I see how it is. I see how it I is. Didn't... It's fine. You, get, you gotta cheat. You gotta cheat your support with some love, guys. I mean, this dude has been keeping Navis alive or doing his damn best all the game. He's been sitting alongside him, he's laying with him for the first fifteen minutes of this game. You can't just treat him dirty like that. Come on. Give, yes, you can. Give support some true love that he deserves. No, no. Yes, you can. I'm just coming, this is coming from a Galio one. This is coming from a Galio main is pretty rich, I feel. But <laughs> we'll come back to that in a little bit as I want to take a quick look down the items. Navis has picked himself up a Blade of the Rune King as well as the Hurricane. So, her bottom score, when they are trying to force this fight, if they get hit by the Chains of Corruption, the speed, the attack speed increase from Pandaren, Navis with the Blade of the Rune King and the Hurricane is just going to be tearing her part if they can't get on top of them. Of course, and of course, Rogue Phoenix 64. You are he's he's very tanky right now, but that uh, percentage health damage from Blade of the Rune King is going to shred him. Not to mention the kiting possibility from Blade of the Rune King as well. So it means that even if you catch out Novice, you have to be on him. Otherwise, he's going to get out of there. Ikaju also has a lot of tanky stats with the Spirit Visage, but it's once again he's just going to get shredded. It's, there's so much damage coming out. There's so much dueling potential as well coming out of uh, Navis. Even though he's 032, he is 303 CS. He is almost flame horizoning Hassan, and he's equal in gold. He is just a monster right now. And of exactly. course. And so, talking about gold, look at the gold values. It's only 3k difference, and yet it's so clear who is in control of this game. And if you look at where the gold value is, I mean, bottom lanes are relatively even, but. It's a 5,000 gold difference between enticement and playmaking, and that has got to stick. Oh, uh, it definitely does. And enticement has actually gone for um, the Oblivion Orb, so he does have 33 mat flat magic pen. So he is going to shred any sticky who doesn't have any magic penetration. And so the Morgana's actually gone for the Locket of the Iron Solari early, just so he has the extra tangy stats, so he has that shield for that burst, because this is what they need. They definitely need that burst, otherwise they're going to get shredded. And it's a good, a good example of that. that. That was absolute amazing damage. That was like one ability from uh, LeBlanc. And they have prepared Mon's They need to do something soon. They are just getting sieged on all sides. One Nexus turret is so close to falling. You could breathe on In fact, no, it does fall. An auto attack coming in. Call the Forge God is do or die. And unfortunately, we'll see how it goes. They are looking it up. They're trying to get on top of the Varus, but it is not enough. He buys himself enough time. And it looks like a Kojo is just going to get shut down by Zavis. They're diving into the back line, but it is not enough. One member falling on the side of Perth Modern School, and no one has gone down for Applegloss. Exile, though, may be the first one to take that claim. Oh, my lord, has it. No, he uses his Applegloss to keep himself nice and alive, but Enticement is just waiting. Ignite goes down onto him. He really wants to try forces, but I don't think they can easily do this while all this is happening. They managed to break open the Nexus. Navis takes down Hassan. The, the Nexus is completely open. He's able to cut his way a double kill coming out for the Barris, and he's actually going to pick himself up a triple kill as well as a pick up for the block, and that is game one going in favor of Applecross Senior High School teammate. That was decimating. Of course, it's a 33 minute game, but it felt like it was just, it was literally Applecross was in the driver's seat the entire time. Uh, Hassan was. Uh, had some moments of brilliance, but it wasn't enough to bring his team back from the depths. And enticement, you are a beast right there. He got that early lead, and then he just snowballed from there. Um, Kajo was quite quite useless, to be honest. He wasn't really able to affect the lanes too much. He wasn't able to... Uh, they weren't really able to uh, catch out anyone too uh, that much. They, enti they just had free reign. Like, Applecross just had free reign the entire game. And... Prathamon School really have to look at what went wrong and come up with a way to fix it before the second game starts. Indeed. So we can do a little bit of theory crafting. I think the biggest thing that Perth Modern School look at is that mid lane. And they threw down the gauntlet with playmaking Zed. They thought to themselves, you know what? We'll take this fight. We'll go head on into it. And Enticement said, okay, I see your game and I will just completely destroy you solo style. So I think you ban the LeBlanc and you give yourself Perth Modern School have side selection as they did lose game number one. You pick red side and you give you give playmaking his counter pick, his pick of the litter up against whatever enticement decides to bring to the table. You ban the LeBlanc, force him into something else, and bring something else to the table is, I think, the direction you could be taking. Because Ekoja, yet yeah, struggled early, didn't have much impact, but I don't think he's the pure reason you look at his team falling behind. The mid lane fell apart and the bottom lane just took forever to get online. So I feel... 
get a stronger presence mid lane, and you should be good to go for the mid game style. But we'll have I, to see. All good. Uh, it's it's. I'll be honest though. It's. I don't think enticements LeBlanc was the most amazing LeBlanc. I think it was more in the back of playmaking, make mistakes in that early laning phase, and then it, enticement just snowballing. You put anyone on a LeBlanc in a in a lane where they get one or two early kills, and they will snowball like crazy. So, I honestly think what they need to do is instead of uh, banning out the LeBlanc, let him have his LeBlanc. But like like you said, red side, make sure you get the counter pick. There are so many champions that counter LeBlanc. Good examples. Galio. Cassidy. I had a feeling you're going to go for the Galio. I was like, well, that's the thing. It's like two champions that I play, and I play them like it's... I, I learned them to counter LeBlanc, who I was having problems with. And both of them are very strong counters. So I see no issue with them uh, basically bringing in this... No, basically just, just counterpicking the... um. With counter picking LeBlanc because LeBlanc at the end of the day is an exploitable champion, but it does look like Perth Modern School is opting to stay on blue side. Indeed, it does appear to be that way, and I think that may be a little bit of a mistake. Although Hassan is very comfortable in his Kaiser, and I think it may be a ploy to ensure he gets his Kaiser. So, another ban I'd maybe look at is leave, don't take Apple Cross ban Zin. Let them have access to their Zin. It's obvious that Ekojak it loves his early, he loves his carry damage junglers. Give him access to his Zin Zhao and take away the Kaiser that was played by Hansen is maybe a possibility that they can look at. But it, it, that, it depends. It's like you do have to change anything though, because Apple Cross, they did win game number one. I don't know if they uh, want to, to uh, swap it around, but we will be taking a hopefully only a few minutes break as, before we load into game number two between Perth Modern School, who are in a do-or-die situation, and Applecross Senior High School Team A, who, if they can clinch game number two, get a clear run to the finals. Yep, guys, don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
Sure. Me. And welcome back, guys, to the second game of this final series for the High School Esports League, where Applecross Senior High School Team Number One is one game away from advancing in this playoffs series. But of course, on the other side of the rift, Perth Modern School is not going to let them get away without a little bit of a fight. Game one was not high in goals, not high in kills. Actually, not because that's a bit of a lie with that one. Not high in goal difference, but Applecross got the lead early and rode it all the way down to the damn nexus, while Perth was just unable to scrape up the pieces. So we will be loading ourselves into game number two of this series. My name is, of course, still you and Eardus Reed, and joining me still, once again, is, of course, Jackson Proch Williams. Oh, thank you for that wonderful intro right there. And of course, we're getting ready for game two. Now, the question is, will Apple Cross be able to decimate once again? Or will Perth Modern School come back fighting and bring this to a silver scrapes best of three? Exactly. I'm hoping for a best of three series in this particular matchup purely because Apple Cross had a brilliant macro game. But in the mid game, they kept getting caught out of position. We saw multiple times the likes of Itzik and Exile, and even Enticement, just in places where they should not be. So, oh, it's, of it's a oh. worry. Oh, indeed. Perth Modern School's macro was quite abysmal. So, what they would do is they'd say, okay, we can go for this, but they don't ever think, oh, if we go for this, they'll go for that. They never prepped the side waves. They never had lane pressure. They never, they never really had anything yeah, that they could really do it. So, they could just get everything forced on. <laughs> and uh, we got get mad. ourselves into pick and bad and as I was saying in the last game, Enticement is not allowed access to his LeBlanc, which makes a lot of sense. I mean we did say before that yeah, outside of the early LeBlanc snowball, you don't take it. But Perth Modern School elected to take Blue's side. So they simply said that instead of giving the counter matchup for playmaking get rid of the champion he was struggling and, and still have faith in his champion as nearly as well. Okay, so they're going for the ban everything that we struggled with last game strategy. So, it, can they ban the kitchen sink by any chance? Is that, uh, is that a possibility? We don't have enough to answer that yet, but I'm certain they are going to damn well try because it Which, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, it it's, does uh, it's, sense. It's only There's only like 140 champions. Surely you can ban a few of them. Indeed, but we'll have to see. As Apple crosses bans, look the exact same so the Zinzao is a possibility as Ari is the only overlapping ban between game one and game two coming out of Perth modern school and can we get a Zinzao? come on come on Apple I actually think it's going to be the Kaiser ban this time because they did actually have a bit of problem with that and Ikajo shows that he's, he's it's the it's Zinzao so of course Ikajo might only be three oh! major <laughs> Okay, Hassan wants to show off. He wants to get uh, the do or die situation. He's like, you know who I need? The glorious executioner needs to come to the rift. As Draven is the first pick in. Yeah, and of course, we do have the Draven. So, Draven is a very good snowbally ADC. Hello? Very good for like that kill pressure in lane. Very good for getting that early advantage and just running with it. You get that Bloodthirst, you get the Storm Razor. Next thing you know, you're just one shotting people at Thrun Center. Um, it's. It, it does become problematic as the game draws on, though. He's great in the 1v1 dueling, but in team fights, he's just not as strong as a champion like, say, Jinx or your Varus or your Twitch, your hyperscaling team fight ADCs. But of course, he's very good at champions that are lane bullies themselves, like the Lucian, for example, who's been an absolute menace in the meta lately. Exactly, but for example, Applegrass, I don't see a reason why they don't pick Varus Lulu again. I mean, they've picked up Exiles Trundled. Now, Enticement has gone for Oriana, the if you can beat me, you're OP, and if you lose to me, well, that's about expected uh, mid lane champion. So, throwing down the gauntlet to playmaking once again is Ikajo favors the Udyr for a second time this particular series. So, hopefully, have a bit more imp early impact. But, ooh, playmaking goes to another fun matchup with a Vladimir. Yep, so Vladimir to Oriana. So, I do believe the Oriana actually does win that. But the Vladimir outscales Creep because of course he does. He's a Vladimir. But please let this be a ribbon. <laughs> oh my god! That is... Okay, I'm talking about earlier about game one, the gauntlet throwdown between enticement and playmaking, but this is a gauntlet because this has to be ribbon top. Unless, and this is the ultimate bait, ribbon jungle, be ribbon, ribbon jungle flex. Now, it's unlikely, but I've seen ribbon jungle before. So... Mind games coming out of Apple Cross here. Now 
and of course, Riven's an amazing top lane. But I, if if they did pick the Riven, I don't understand why they'd pick the Riven now. Rather than save it for the fifth pick, because they are a red side, they do get the counter pick. Because Riven can be shut down by so many champions. Now, if they pick a Shen, for example, in the top lane, uh, if if Riven doesn't get a kill in the first few before the first back, um, then Shen pretty much outscales, and he outscales hardcore. Um, Indeed, I think of Poppy as well. Poppy. That's a lovely job of shoving down as Lulu is taken away. So Panarin is not going to have access to the Faye print, uh, Faye print, Faye, Faye spellcast. What am I trying to say? Princess? I, mean, I, I, I don't know what you're trying to say. I um, don't know either. Words are coming out. And then unfortunately, you know, words have got to keep coming out. That's part of the job. Is Morgana taken away? I do like that. Morgana was causing some serious issues for Apple Cross. Just getting constantly caught, caught out by Dark Bunnings. And Varys away. So they take away... The bottom lane that caused the mystery. So Navis and Pandren, you're gonna have to show us something else this game, baby. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. So, Morgana, Var sorry, it's just trying to just trying to wrap me around. So, oh, please, no way. For the love of God, there is no way they lock in this volley bear. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. Leona locked in, keeping Navis's this is a AD carry pick. Probably gonna be a kill lane in bot lane, I reckon. So with um Leona, it could also be like a Leona Ash, something like that. So like the issue is with Draven, you want to either play really aggressive and out aggression him, or wait, if you think about it though, this could be like Do you think they're gonna go for someone like uh maybe a Mordekaiser? Give me out here. though, Renekton into a ribbon top lane actually is a skill matchup. But does favor Renekton because Renekton has the, uh, I forget the name of the ability, the uh, crowd control, the stun that comes in from, I believe, Yes. Like, pun? Yes, but, um, it's like Renekton, Riven, that's a very, it's obviously a snowball matchup, but it really does depend on how it goes. And I do think that as of lately, the Renekton does outscale. Just because uh, well, If you go for the, uh, let's throw in the Essence re. If, uh, as well as the Omi's Ghost Blade and Bowser Blade of the Rune King build, then yes, definitely! Renekton outscales, and that is... Oh, no. That Caitlyn just makes that bottom lane so painful. You get hit by one Leona combo. Yeah, and I was, I, was, I was trying to think about that, because I'm thinking, like, maybe Ash. Ash keeps you at range, but no, that doesn't work. The Kai'Sa isn't enough kill pressure to go with the Leona. Um, the Lucian isn't really good into the Draven, so you have to really be able to, like, you have to really play that aggressively, and that's a massive risk. And then Caitlyn makes so much sense now, because you can then outpoke. You have decent trading. Um, you have a lot of range, so you're safe. And then when you go for that kill, you have so much lockdown. So... I love this Leona Caitlyn bot lane. This is an absolutely amazing counter to the Draven. And because the amount of range and the amount of kill pressure they have, the Draven and Nami actually have to play a little bit scared. They have to be played very careful. And of course, the only way this doesn't work out is if the Caitlyn has no mana. Indeed, but we'll come back to the bot lane a little bit. They've uh, put Applecross have decided to pull a little switcheroo on us. It looks like Itza is playing his Trundle jungle and exiled. Is a top lane with Riven. Knight. So oh, he's going for the snowball. And if he gets that snowball onto the Renekton, this Riven can pop off. The issue is that he will get outscaled in the 1v1. Um, and it's it so he it's it's I can see why he'd pick the ignite, because you need to confirm that you're going to get that snowball. You need to confirm you're gonna get that win. And oh it's and also, with Teleport being nerfed, I believe, last patch, adding an extra minute on cooldown, I know a lot of top laners have been running other stuff. I, myself, have been bringing Exhaust up into the top lane. So seeing Ignite, just as I guess I've said in the previous cast, reminds me of the good old days of Season 3. Honestly, back in Season 3, I still ran Teleport. Really? Uh, I was... Ignite Trundle. That nah, was... I am a teleport player. I bring teleport everywhere. If I could run, I I I used to run like teleport smite in the jungle. Wow! Don't, don't you're fun. That was you're that was parties. a very dark time. Actually, yes, it is because I show up to them, you win. Wow, that just was like a that's a, that's a straight up personal shot. <laughs> <laughs> As we are, oh, I got to write down the last of my picks on my little notepad for the yep. finals when they do poke around, but. So let's talk about this top lane for a little bit because I think everyone has seen a highlight clip of Riven. I think I think of uh, Best Riven, NA, Viper, and Boxbox, Box, I believe, who was talked about earlier in this in the first half of Cast, if I remember correctly. 
if this Riven can get ahead, she is going to destroy every single person on Perth Modern School. We've seen what a fed Riven can do. Mm, not necessarily. Like, so here's, and here's the issue with Riven. So Riven, if Riven gets locked up and Riven relies on that 1v1 potential, uh, does have some decent AoE in those teamfights, but needs to, do, uh, basically needs to play around that flash if she gets ahead. Um, but udio has got that CC, that instant CC. You have to react him with the instant CC. So it can be very difficult for Riven to pop off. But if he does get a big enough lead, like, I mean, like a half an item to an item, then we're going to see some Riven pops. But till then, it can be quite problematic and can be very wishy-washy. But it's, it's more... It's, it's either way. You have two divers in the top lane. You don't have peel this game except for Nami. Nami's the only peel, real peel in this game. Everyone else is hard engaged. You got the Leona. You got the Trundle who wants to run at you. Riven who wants to run at you. Oriana with the shockwave. Um, that's slight peel, but it's also amazing engage. Uh, you got Draven runs at you. Udyr runs at you. Vladimir runs at you. Renekton runs at you. Nami. There's your. That's the majority of your peel for both teams in the Nami. This feels oddly familiar. I'm hearing. There's a lot of dive coming out of these two teams, and not a lot of hot appeal, a whole lot of appeal coming out of the rest of the team comps. And uh, this sounds oddly reminiscent of game number one yep. of this series because Apple Cross is like, <laughs> Apple Cross is like, hey guys, we're gonna use this uh, dive comp, we're gonna make it work, and then like, Perth Modern School is like, hey, they used the dive comp and it worked. Let's use the dive comp too. Sounds like a great exactly. idea. <laughs> I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it seems that both teams want to go for a bit more of an all-in styled uh, approach. So we'll have to see who comes out on top of this matchup as we look down the... Oh, okay. So I'm looking down the keystones. There's two keystones that interest me. Electrocute coming out of the Vladimir, which I find a bit odd because Electrocute got nerfed this patch along with the fact that you typically run Predator, so you get access to the backline. But more important, Exiled is running Comet on Riven. Yes, that is very peculiar, and hopefully it isn't the wrong runes. That could be very problematic. So, you, the Comet will allow for probably a bit more lane harass early, but less kill pressure as the game goes on. Um, as for... it's an, Small things to note on top of all that, though. So, you do have the standard like Aftershock fleet footwork in the bot lane from Navis Pandaren, but... In the mid lane, Oriana, instead of going the area, has gone for the electrocute. So more burst damage there. And is it so Isaac has gone for press the attack, which is standard, but Ikajo has actually gone for the conqueror on this Udir as opposed to the uh as opposed to press the attack, which is gonna be interesting considering how hard it is for a jungle to proc it as opposed to press the attack. Exactly, he has to get all those stacks up before he's able to do anything as he exiled uh well, he, that's first blood on side of playmaking. He uh, he did the first bit of damage that's coming out there. So, that's GG. <laughs> uh, GG. 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 Exactly, his recoil comes out. And nothing too early coming out of these two teams, unfortunately. I would love to see some early shenanigans coming out of teams. It's always fun to watch level 1 fights, but it makes a lot of sense. Applecross have no need. I think they feel confident enough in their laning, especially after that first game. Say, so we don't need to be recklessly aggressive, even if we have a Leona level 1. And Perth Modern School... I have to be careful. They're one game away from going home, if they're not already actually. Yeah. What's the best analogy I've ever used? Yeah, that that that's um a quite a poor analogy to be honest. Um, yes, they might be going home. Um, just like yeah, it's like it's like after this cast, uh, you and I are going home, guys. Um, yeah, it's gonna be great trip oh, so home. The difference is I've already ended there, so you know, I I am too. I, oh yeah, you are too. Yeah, you cast from. Oh, oh, we've got enough track very very quickly as. It looks like there's no early shenanigans, and both junglers will be doing a uh, paralleled path along the bottom side of the map. But Udia, once again, with that really quick clear coming out. So, Exile, I'm going to keep my eyes on this top lane just because, like I said, like we were saying in the pre game, Riven, if you give her an inch, she will not only take a mile, but she'll also take your arm. So. Yeah, but that's the exact same with Renekton, though. That's why this lane is so snowbally. But of course, the Renekton counter into Riven. I, that's 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 favored to Renekton, and already we're seeing like the the trading from Renekton just being so strong, especially they press the attack. So the longer the trade goes, the more advantage advantageous it is towards the Renekton, especially because that extra damage that comes out. The extra damage, and of course, Renekton has a little uh, cheat code when it comes to proccing press the attack, uh, which is 
your ruthless predator, I believe the ability name is. Now I need. Now I have a moral obligation to check. It's the yeah, ruthless predator. The W, the stun. If it, if you have your rage bar charged and you land the W, it counts as three separate auto attacks. So you pretty much get press the attack for free by using one ability. Yeah, so he's going to make sure his rage bar is fully stacked up for that as well. So it looks like we're playing Shinim in the top lane right now. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like, Manalus Champion's top lane is like a great joy. And you play against a Manalus Champion, you're like, why do you never stop pushing this lane? And when you got two of them, it's like, this is constantly fighting, which is, this is an absolute gem to watch. I'll be honest, the only real Manalus Champion I have trouble with in the top lane currently is Renekton in some matchups, simply because of the Conqueror. Hayek. Conqueror is... Renekton is... Oh, we do a playmaking, oh, having playmaking to burn the been a little bit of trouble. He needs to make a play here, and Electrocute is Frog's a lovely pool coming out away from the pillar, and he should be able to get his way out of this one alive. Burn the flash for safe measure. That's actually really good, I mean, early game coming out, and only a flash burn for it. Yeah, and of course, it does mean that it's... Uh, obviously, it's it's great for uh, it's great for playmaking just to get out of their life. Style, that's really risky. One more hit will do it. Oh no, you do not want to. Perf... Oh no, that's that's really bad for Applecross. You cannot have TP Renekton being the one that snowballs in this top lane matchup. Yeah, and that's the ignite and the flash burn from Exiled as well. So, and he loses an entire wave on top of that. So it's not only like first blood over to Renekton, that is another wave gone and. Uh, his reaction is actually not backing. He's choosing to abuse the fact that Riven has no TP and just denying oh, another wave. Right in the bottom lane right now, they are locking up this Draven, but the glorious execution that cannot be kept down. Hassan running for his life, but it looks like the troll is coming in from the bottom side. The stuggling Hassan forced to flash immediately. Chop out. One more hit will do it, but the ebb and flow taking out. But the Nami looks like they want sushi instead. Van Bad Pig comes in for a gank. Gets the flash there. Slap on the Navis, but Navis is way too safe. And Nicojack made a bit of an oopsies there. Gets taken out. Oh, and of course, Ikajo comes in, and of course, we see, just like what happened with the previous game, Udyr is kited to hell. You yeah, do have the heal coming out from Novice, but it's it's a small price to pay for getting two kills onto, like, getting two kills on, one into your ADC and one into your jungler, and just being able to just tilt your opponent. So Ikajo is not having the CS lead like he did have the first game, but... He's, he's not having any success in, these in this gank either. That's five minutes in, you're one to two, 600 gold down, and it's you got to make sure that this doesn't snowball too far out of control. And this is bad, especially considering they even got first blood. Indeed, we're pausing at 525. Unfortunately, we have uh, fallen out of sync with our broadcaster, so hopefully, Jackson, when you get to 525, just let us know. We can count ourselves oh, I'm in. Already there. I'm all right, already there. all right. Three, two, one, go. Uh, there we go. Apologies for that, guys. Technical issues because, well, when you have three different, three different, a broadcaster and two casters in two, three different locations, things get a little bit fancy. But as you were saying in that bottom side, Udyr just couldn't, you know, get anything done. Well, and that's the issue with Udyr gank. So Udyr is very reliant on just is is just very reliant on uh, pretty much his power farm because he doesn't have great ganking. He doesn't have any gap closer. He has a lot of speed, but that's it. It's just movement speed. It's no real. Gap closer or anything like that, and of course, it's level six Renekton with a kill under his belt. Twelve CS up is just a menace to Riven, and he has free reign of that top lane. Exactly, and that's really bad for the side of Exile. We talked about how Riven wanted to get an early kill to, you know, get the snowball in line. We've all seen, as I said earlier, the highlight clips of a fed Riven. Unfortunately, we may be getting a a highlight of an unfed Riven if there is no help put at this top side. Isaac needs to help Exile in this top lane because uh, this Renekton is very strong right now so we'll have to see if he does get any support any bit of love coming up there as that is one combo and that's a third of exiled health yeah, a exiled bit more health. than a bit more than a third right there but of course it's you gotta you gotta think like if you have a how would a how would a um compilation of an unfed ribbon go would you have like just the ribbon dying playing to the tune of yakity sax basically i don't know i don't i I mean, I've never made a compilation in my life, so I'm not sure what uh, what fancy music we'd use, but basically Riven, that or like failing cues over the wall. So, but, you know, hopefully Exiled is able to bring it back up. His Ignite is almost back up as... He, he might just be going in for something. Hey, dear, my He's... screen is frozen at seven minutes. Oh, seven minutes? Oh, okay, no worries. I shall pause at 7.15 for you. I've... Uh, my internet is 
Oh boy. So we'll hopefully get back in there. Hopefully. Where uh, Where are you up to? I'm still stuck at seven minutes. My timer is literally not moving. Okay, I will. I is the screen still moving or? Uh, no, I'm like the clock has stopped moving. I just. I, so I we... managed to freeze reality. You have. So I was trying to pretend that I was frozen in reality, but then I'm like, yeah, the people on Twitch won't get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no. I'm... Apologies about this. My. Uh... So, um, we are. Uh, I am. I'm waiting at seven minutes for you right now, but uh, I think Unit is waiting. Where is she waiting? Cause my I can't actually bring the stream up on my other monitor. No, okay, that's that's that is that is perfectly fine. Um. Okay. So we are guys. We are I'm currently. I can go from seven minutes now. So we are we synced up with all three of us. Seven fifty. Okay. Let's okay, go to 7.15. Go to 7.15. The problem with this guy's technical issues is story of Oceana right now. Alright, so we need to get to 7.15 so we can sync up. 7.15. With... Ready? Alright, uh, give me a second to get there. Okay, guys, if everyone ever wants to know All what right, the issue is. Okay, 3, 2, 1, resume. And resume, and we resumed to... Wow. Okay, that was a horrible time to resume. Poor Exiled. We had to just watch. Okay, so what happened there is... uh. Basically, April Wang went in, and uh, next thing you know, uh, Riven's no more. That's that's exiled. That's that's the unfed Riven. It's like you got the Yaki Sax music playing. That's uh, how's it going? Something like that. I don't know. And um, yeah, you have the Riven going down hardcore. So that is quite problematic. But if you look at the bot lane, the Draven is equal in CS with the Caitlyn. But the Caitlyn is 101, and this is where a Caitlyn wants to be. It's like you're winning lane slightly, you have these small advantages, you got the kills, and you're not getting bullied out by this lane. So the Draven was actually. This is an amazing counter pick from the side of Perth Modern School. Oh, no, sorry, Applecross. But the Riven is flopping hardcore right now, and this is equaling up the gold, as Renekton is just snowballing here. But it does appear that we are looking for um, it's it's just just your standard kind of uh back and forth between the lanes. Of course, the Riven is invading the top side jungle. Edir is there. It might be a bit of an altercation, but of course, nothing too serious. Um, and we do appear to have the um, do appear to have the Renekton. Yeah. So it's well. So I apologies, guys. We are having a. Oh, sweet. So we are having a small issue with Yato, so I'm going to have to solo cast for a bit. So, key things to note here is in this top lane, oh, Exile, he's, he's actually getting a lot of damage, and that is half his health down from a single combo from the Renekton. And this is not what he wants. He needs to get that Ninja Tabe, and he needs to get it fast. Otherwise, he is going to be a fish out of water, just like the Nami is. But it's ah, such, such a problematic instance, as... Hassan is not getting the lead that he wants to. Nothing is really working on this bot side, but it's top side. It's definitely it's definitely lane dependent on what happens from here. So, yep. So, uh, just checking my broadcast. We are synced up perfectly, but Akaja is coming in for a gank in the bot side. The Pandaren is getting absolutely decimated right there, but Akaja is getting versus the Diamond Crazy. There's so much CC going there. Flashes in Navis. Navis goes down, but we have Draven Ultimate. He was not able to pick up the kill into the... Leona, Leona gets out alive. And of course, so we are going to sink at 10 minutes. So I will have to pause right there, guys. But that was a chaotic fight down there. And paused at 10 minutes, guys. Yep. Sorry about this guy's technical issues. I'm, uh, are you at 10 minutes? I'm at 10 minutes now. Okay, ready? 3, 2, 1, unpause. Exiled and uh, well, Emperor's been doing this whole game. He's got a two level advantage. I, I feel really bad for Exiled, man. This is a really rough lane. Well, this is what happens when you blind pick the Riven. You can't blind pick the Riven. It's it's so counterable. You need to counter pick the Riven and then you need to get that lead. Dude, Emperor Wang is in a little bit of trouble. Pops that Dominus. They want to try for something in this top side of the map, but I don't really know if it's the best idea. The Emperor doesn't give a damn. He goes straight for the Exile and just crushes him out. It looks like it's in a little bit of trouble. Emperor 
is choosing to run though. I don't know if his cooldowns are up and available. Dominus has just worn itself out. Cold and Meek for a little bit of help and a couple of hits. Oh no, it's an ambush! He didn't see the man that thing coming out! The Flash Oriana Shockwave comes out, managed to pick up one, but Playmaking has access to the backside and with no mana and no help, enticement's going nowhere. Yep, and right there we do have a <laughs> it's 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 absolutely chaos up there. They tried to 2v1 the Renekton, but of course Emperor Wang was not going down without a fight. They were able to pick up the kill on the back of all that, but they lost three, no less than three members for it. And this is huge. On top of the first tower gold, that is a 1500 gold lead for Perth Modern School. So they have turned this game around. They um have capitalized literally on this blind ribbon counter pick and have just snowballed the lead from there. This is insane. Exactly, and it's disastrous for the side of Apple Cross. I mean, they felt very confident enough to game number one. They thought to themselves, yeah, we can go into this, we should be fine, but unfortunately is not the case as Exile still two levels down over his opposite number of the Emperor. And it's just a bit of a worry. What do Apple Cross need to do here? I mean yeah, their macro in game number one was solid, but they also had all the tempo and a very strong uh, enticement to follow up their moves with, you know, not nearly as strong a position as they were in game one. Like, can they still make the same level of macro calls? It's... Because last time, last game they had a lot of pressure in the mid lane to work with, but this time they've only got a they've barely got a they've only got like a 16 CS lead in the mid lane. They don't really have any major lead. The Ariana does have the Luden's Echo, but this is a Vladimir. He doesn't worry about your burst. If you try to burst him down, he'll just turn it around on you because he has so much health regen in a quick moment of time. So, Enticement's just trying to do what he can. Oh, but Emperor oh, Wang, my lord, Exiled and Emperor. I mean, that's half of his health from a single combo without Dominus being used. All I'm going to say, imagine if they committed Dominus there. So imagine if Koja was up there in the top lane. If you see him in the mid lane, the Shockwave full super early. The Ignite coming out from playmaking just to prove a point. Me like, no, no, no. You're not allowed to heal up. But... Oh, I got so excited. If Emperor was able to get on top of him, I think he could honestly one-shot the enticement Soriana. Yeah. And of course, it does look like Emperor Wang is still here. He oh, is actually going to get onto them. He gets the stun, but he realizes he's in a little bit outnumbered right now. There is no support. His playmaking has recalled, and Emperor forced to use the Dominus, but I don't think he realized playmaking wasn't there. Yep, and of course, Emperor Wang, you have been making a couple questionable decisions lately, and of course, that is only one of probably a few more to come before uh, Riven uh, exiled on this Riven gets back into this game. So it's going to be interesting to see how he can, how uh, Riven can do this year. He is going to push it up, but of course Emperor Wing does have the teleport, so he will be able to catch the wave in the top lane. And Riven just has to be very careful, because this is a Black Cleaver Tiamat Renekton. He's got auto attack resets galore, he's got a lot of damage, he shreds armor, oh, and he's got no a lot damage. of health. This bottom lane, Pandaren, is in quite a little bit of dangerous. Hassan is locked up by the Solar Flare, but there is support coming in from the back lane. Playmaking destroys Navis, and uh, Hassan is getting his way out of there alive, and I think they may want to try to leave this to the Draven so we can get a cash in, but there we go! 700 bonus gold for the Draven! 769 gold! Oh, Koja is caught out, the Shockwave pulled, and uh, Koja, you're a little lost, mate. I don't know what the plan was there. He got lost. But he didn't know where he was. It's, it's... He's so wayward sometimes, but of course, it does mean that it's, um... It's, if you look at this from across the map, you do have a double, needlessly large rod, um, Vladimir, and once again, Exa that's more than half his health. Exile's stepping forwards as well, like, I'm surprised Emperor Mike backed up. Like, he can force that fight there, everyone is on the bottom side of the map, like, honestly, Emperor Mike should be tower diving Exile. I think he has the damage with the Dominus up, he can tower dive him, instead he's backing out, he's playing... I feel like he's almost playing too safe, given how far ahead he is. Well, sometimes it's good to play safe and then apply pressure to the rest of the map. Because if he does dive under the tower and does a try and go for the kill, you do still do have the stun from the Riven. And you still do have a small knockoff and disruption and quite a lot of burst with the ultimate as well. So it's reasonable to assume why someone would actually choose to uh, go for more of the safer play rather than like the snowball play. 
Ooh, oh, to lose the turret. So that's the turret falling down. Pandaren is taken out so low. I feel like I'm having history repeat itself as the shutdown. Not the shutdown. Apologies. The cash in for Hansen coming out. 200 bonus gold out there. So this Draven with his storm raises completed is uh, feeling pretty good about himself. Oh, indeed. Flat damage. A lot of attack speed. That first hit burst. He will be ready to one shot. Oh my lord, he flashes in. Stand aside, Caitlyn. There's a new sheriff on the rift. His name is Draven. And he runs forward yelling, You have no mana. And he kills him. <laughs> indeed, enticement in a little bit of trouble. Should be able to get it. Indeed, nervous. There's, oh my lord, enticement's gonna fall. A lovely flash. And by making it, gotta hit him with the BM. Of course. And. Exile, you better get out of there because Emperor Wang is on top of you right now. It's a battle of cooldown reduction. Ooh, exile, you better run, you better hide because Emperor Wang is coming for you tonight. He's taking him out so low. Trying to fight him back with the Ignite and the key hit, but it is not enough as the Broken Blade forced the Flashing Blade out of there. Exile and Wang, that fight, given how far ahead Wang is, was far too close. Yep, and that was the Ignite and the Flash burns from Exiled while the Flash Wang, is- Wang has Flash. He has oh, Flash! He has everything and he has himself a solo kill! Exiled, you burnt everything before and Emperor Wang capitalized on it. You do have so much burst coming in from Emperor Wang and you've only just got the Ninja Tarbi from uh, Exiled there so I don't know what was wrong with him to make him wait so long to get that because he was literally getting half health with each combo. Exactly, Exiled. I don't think he realized Emperor Wang's flash was up and available. Oh, lovely solar flare onto the Draven, the shockwave as well. The glorious executioner has executed himself. The Oriana falls in the process, but Navis and Vanderen should be able to run down Vladimir, the Crimson man. Oh no, he has to get out alive with the help of Kachin, but one for one trade in the mid lane. But wait, Draven wait. loses his stacks of adoration. Wait, 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 wait. You said what? What did you call an army? Kaching. I, I'm trying, okay? We both it's, know I can't do names. Hey, hey, Kaching, Kaching. Hey, guys, guys, the Nami is now called Kaching, okay? <laughs> yeah, he needs to um, change his name to Kaching. I don't know why his can, name is that. It, yeah, it, 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 he's reported because he's um he doesn't have Kaching on his uh on the uh server, so it's it's supposed to be Kathach, but it's Kaching, guys. It's Kaching. Look, we've passed it long enough for you to know I can't so pronounce. So we got we got M we got M Wong in the top lane. We got Joker in the mid lane uh, in the jungle. We got Making plays in the mid lane. I'm I'm not really original with this. Uh, we yeah, got you're really you're trying. Now we got like what we have. Oh, the stun is down. Exile should be in a lot of trouble. The Emperor should be able to force this out. He slashes. He slices and dices. He pops the dominus. The stun as well. A couple more autos. The key strike will buy him a little bit of time, but two levels down. Oh, this King of the Trolls is here with the pillar, so he does buy time. But the issue is that this is going to continue to happen, and Applecross continually will need to send two to three members to deal with this Renekton every time he steps up in Exile's face. Mm, and Renekton's almost got the Steric Gauge as well, which is just going to make this even more hazardous to the Riven. And it's so much mobility on Renekton that even oh. if he does get collapsed on, he has a lot of he has a lot of escape tools. He's um He's, and he's got the TP as well if he ever needs to get back to lane or if he ever needs Ooh, to like join us. He might be in a little bit of trouble here. It's a two on two in the mid lane. Junglers and mid lane is Shockwave coming out as well as the Ignite. But the Flash is, is a little bit too late. Too late. He manages to get himself a shutdown, but he himself will be taking that man. Pepping is on a rampage. He takes down one for the shutdown. Exile is running for his life, but he gets burned out. And Nikoja simply walks out with style. Yep, and... Ikajo is just absolutely decimating right there. Playmaking got collapse on, but he turned it around, getting the kill, solo Hassan, kill onto a Tyson. You're playing super dangerous. Stand aside onto the trap. That was a little ambitious. That was um extremely ambitious, and if you look at that, they actually still have the majority of their health. So it's oh, they were doesn't have health. Bottom lane tier two. Yeah, that this is. This is, this is a completely opposite game. We do see the pressure coming in. So this is what happens when Apricots don't have the pressure and um, Perth Mon School do. Neither team seems to know how to play from behind. They get desperate. But when playing from in front, they just seem so coordinated, so on point. They have their organization. They have their ideas. They know what to do. And Draven's just been able to, like, ever since, like, uh, shortly after the early laning phase, he was able to then get a couple kills, get his adoration stacks, and he's just gone so far ahead. This is 6,000 gold difference. 
at 20 minutes. And the Renekton is decimating. He has a Titanic. He has the Black Cleaver. He can clear waves for days. Um, he's a full item ahead of the Riven. He doesn't even have the team out yet. Exactly. Well, the, the Titanic Hydra coming out for that extra auto attack reset, which with press the attack just means it's more to deal with for exiled Riven, who... I mean, if you look at the gold difference between these two champions, it really says the story. About 2,000 gold in favor of Renekton. And I'm pretty sure we all know what happens when Renekton gets ahead. Yeah, we talked about how great Riven can be, but Renekton, if he... I'm praying he goes for the uh, Essence Reaver build as well, just because if he wants to get a split push on against Exiled, that is the item to go for, I feel. Yeah, it, it's... <sighs> Disgusting? It is definitely this is this is a disgusting matchup in the top lane right now. It's you're looking at you're looking at a massive crocodile and a little girl with a foam sword at this point. That's literally what you're looking at because that's what it feels like. It's you don't have your tower to be there, and it's they even have to send the channel there to deal with them. And then Renekton can just back up and they can force something in mid. Udi is just pushing top side. Oh no, the center play doesn't land, but then buy out the solar flare. But Penrin is a little bit too far forward. Cash in $500 for the Draven, but looks like Exile has finally got access to the back line, but it is not enough. Playmaking is a little bit lost in between the enemy back and front lines. Enticement, will, Enticement should be able to get himself out of there alive. But with Dominus up and running for the Emperor, Exile throwing himself into the fray. And actually, Dash is out almost immediately. But all this is happening, Ikojo is hanging out on the top side of the map. He is opening the gates, I believe the phrase is. So, someone needs to deal with this Udia, otherwise, well, they're going to lose everything. Hey guys, let's just send uh, Exiled. You know the guy who's like three levels behind Akajo and is getting decimated by everyone he wanted? He's under the turret by Akajo, now in a 2v1. Sorry, because Riven basically doesn't count at this point. Uh, and he gets out. That's disastrous. You cannot, you can't send Exiled anywhere without someone to hold his hand. Because otherwise he's gonna get swept up in a tidal wave and blown out to sea. I feel so bad because we're like ripping on Exile so bad right now, but he's he, he's just getting stomped on. It's a zero six two ribbon at twenty three minutes. This is not where you want to be as a ribbon. This is your third Drake for the side of the Perth Modern School. They've turned the series around so far, and double Cloud Drake means they will be able to out rotate. They will be able to chase down. They will be able to out split push. There's nothing really that you can do to, as you can really do to match Perth Modern School right now. You need to just stall it out and hope that your Kaylin can get to that point where she outscales. She gets a three item power spike and then she shreds. And that's what you have to look for. Exactly, but they're right now, Apple Cross are really struggling to, you know, turtle themselves up. They keep trying to step forwards. They keep trying to send people to the locations where they straight up cannot be in exile. He's finally got himself a little bit of a free lane to grab a farm for himself, but what worries me is the fact that there is no teleport. Oh, actually, what worries me also is the uh, is it is a little bit of trouble, but there's no teleport. So when teleport from Emperor Wang comes back up and available, they can send him bottom lane, and then there is a timer on Apple Cross. Do they like if they send everyone to the Baron and don't commit to it, Emperor simply gets a free turret. If they commit to Emperor, that's a free Baron for Perth Modern School, and it's like well. What do we do here? It's it's always a big question. It's always a big question in the macro game. But currently, they've got uh, Exile pushing this top tower, and Akaja is going to match. And Akaja has so much more speed uh -oh. as well. Oh, this is a three-level advantage. This is cruel. Akaja has no mercy. He has nothing for matching. He's taking that super low. There's no way, right? Yeah. That was... Okay, I said that was cruel. He's 0-7 with not even two items, and he nearly won that duel. That, that's actually a bit of a worry. Like, I know we've been ripping him a little bit, but he nearly won that. He did, and that's... it's... Well, the big issue is that... Oh, Shock went under the Draven! He's in, he's in so much trouble, but he manages to keep himself alive. It looks like they're fully committing for the dive out there. The title with gets a couple of knockouts. Playmaking is still alive with that pool in the back lane. Leona will eventually fall to the transfusion. Oh, the Tides of Blood, the double kill coming out. And the Emperor has not had enough. He manages to take down a shutdown. Finally falls out onto him. Hasn't gets chomped out by the King of the Trolls. So in a little bit of trouble right now. As it looks like... Uh, there we go. That's it. They, look, they look a little bit lost. But Kajo here with full health, full life, full everything. That is going to be the middle lane inhibitor cracking. As well as the turret falling. Well, and right there. 
Right there, that's all they needed. They just broke open the base, and this is 10,000 gold. Seven towers to one, 23, 11, three Jakes to nothing. And now they just do the same thing of like, hey guys, we once again destroyed something of theirs. Let's just take the entire jungle. Exactly, but that's like what they need to do right now. With the middle lane inhibitor falling, what you can look at, Baron, and then start the split push. You can put Emperor in one lane. You put a Kajo, or even a Kajo in one of the lanes. Then you throw playmaking, Emperor has it and catch it into the other lane. And Applecross need to pull off one hell of a Hail Mary play. Yep, and right there, Applecross is just absolutely decimating. Oh, sorry, it's being decimated, sorry. And it's, we look at Aww. the... We look at, <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world. You're like, I'm about to get this ward, and then your sweeper wears out, and you have to drop a control ward. Like, ugh. Yeah. Oh, that was close. Emperor Wang was not able to get into exile before he got out. But of course, the longer this game goes, the worse it gets for Perth Modern School. They can keep stalling it out. They can get the Caitlyn on board. But this, but playmaking is getting revenge on enticement in the mid lane, and of course, Vladimir is a scaler as well. 724. He's got a double blasting one. He's got his dark seal, his sorcerer uh -oh. shoes. Exile. Oh, Exile is going to get stunned up by the bear slap, gets slapped out. Are they going to hit the blast cone? No. That is a blast cone, but of course, the shockwave is down <laughs> as well. And this is. Why? <laughs> Billy down. They need that shockwave for the Baron play that's coming up soon, so. Yeah, but the, the Caitlyn used her ultimate as well, the ace in the hole. And a little bit of poke. On the Udir. A little that was bit of poke. Health. That was full health. Poke. <laughs> it was only poked in, but hey, what isn't poke is the Baron is being started with no shockwave and no flash on the trundle. They need to do something. Looks like playmaking is doing the job himself. The title is coming out as well. Oh my lord, that trundle got shredded, and unfortunately, Exile, you are stand aside. The glorious executioner has your number. Never mind. It's the man bear pig himself who picks himself up that one flash coming in instead of flash away from Navis, who's running for his life. He's running for all these. Well, there we go. The executioner picks himself up one. And now he looks like he wants to grab a couple more kills under his belt. The Emperor jumps forward, gets locked up, gets the root onto the Leona who is running for her life. But with three members down and just the bottom lane up, I don't think that Apple Crest can stop Perth Modern School from ending. Yeah, Perth Modern School are just decimating right now. And I've said that so much, but it's true every time I say it. And Playmaking has got his revenge for last game as a takedown enticement. And, uh... Never is at three. the game. Game oh three. God. Let the silver scrapes play because we are getting hyped right now. Indeed, and we'll have to see where game three ends up going, but I don't think we need casters to be able to point at what maybe went a little bit downhill in the second game for Apple Cross Senior High School team number one. So I think they know what they need to fix after a, uh, a really rough game number two. And... So we'll be back, hopefully, in only a matter of minutes for game number three between Applecross Senior High School team number one and Perth Modern School for game three, where everything is on the line.
Sweet guys, welcome back to High School E-League. We are in the final round. There should have been some silver scrapes playing, but if not, I'm sure we can do the wee woo woo thing for you instead, just like Mark Z did it in his favorite thing, in his famous uh world's appearance. But of course, guys, once again, I am Jackson Prote Williams. And once again, joined by you and Iatos Reed, and we are getting ready for the semifinals, the final match of this best of three. Exactly. Game one was taken in favor of Apple Cross Senior, who we had to speak about had damn good macro coming into that game. They worked their way around the map, and unfortunately, they uh, Perfmon School was just unable to keep up with them. But game two rolled around, and Apple Cross Senior, with a bit of a greedy draft, drafted a blind pick Riven, and well didn't exactly work out for them yep and with a any with any kind of a uh, character like that so why well, you don't want to blind pick the ribbon and they were even on red side so they could have counter picked the ribbon as well but they blind picked it and then they just proceeded to get dumpstered on and ribbon if ribbon can't win the 1v1 she's practically useless in applying that pressure and every single time um it's just <sighs> honestly exile was just getting decimated left right and center as emperor wang just rocked up there and was just like hey man it's my lane and uh exile's just it's like, my oh. kingdom that i am the emperor of bow down or be destroyed and well we know we know exactly how that looked out for exiled yeah exile's just like okay okay yep that's cool that's cool yep this is okay i'm okay with this no i'm, I'm okay not. just cool 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 but we are loading ourselves into pick and ban of game Number three, and I don't expect a Renekton ban. Honestly, I would expect very similar bans to game number one, to game number two. But you simply do a little bit smarter of a drafting phase, if I'm being, if I'm speaking from the heart. Um, well, we are seeing Ikajo's, uh, Ikajo's Master Yi being banned out yet again. So, 
this has been a constant ban, so I do believe he is a... He's a damn good, yeah. I took a look at his uh, solo queue. He is a very strong Master E player. Yeah, so obviously, simple auto attack based champions. It's just pretty much how <laughs> he goes. I mean, he, you look at his jungle pool. Well, he's playing Udyr, he plays Zin, he plays these, I'm gonna pick on you and I'm gonna destroy you sort of carry jungle. So I do quite like focusing mountain bands coming through, are looking very similar for Apple Cross. They say to themselves, it wasn't the pick and it wasn't the banning that causes our uh, issues game number two. It was simply a bit of a lazy drafting phase and the glorious executioner not allowing himself onto the rift. So him taking away and actually LeBlanc again, which I do find a little surprising, but you know, LeBlanc did get very fed, and it's simply saying, you know what, we'll get rid of it, we'll remove it. any possibilities of this champion coming out, you know, chaining us up and distortioning us all to hell and back. And actually, a different approach here coming out of Applecross, they decide to first pick the bottom lane Lulu, so it feels like a, they're gonna lock, I do quite like it, because we've seen the Varus out of him and such, so it does make quite a bit of sense, but Hassan, Heist is up and available, and game one, his Kaiser was a force to be reckoned with, and we'll have to see how it goes for game number three. Oh, playmaking. Playmaking, you cannot be setting the gauntlet this early on with a Katarina pick. You cannot. There we go, that makes a lot more sense. Corky locked in, double AD carry, but... Or even, yeah, he could go back for the Vladimir, okay. So he does go end up going back for the Vladimir pick, which did work wonders in game number one, and I do quite like it. It does sort of look like Enticement might go back onto the Oriana, or maybe, you know, it gets this pick of the litter of champions, but it, very safe, very difficult to deal with, and just, you know, really annoying to deal with. So I do quite like that lock in for Perth Modern School. But on the other side, Varus, Lulu Varus picked up for the bottom lane once again, which was the combo that worked for them brilliantly in game number one. That was quite a few issues to the moment, and Izik, Trundle's one of his babies. I mean, I think his biggest baby is probably the Jax. He's got a great record on Jax, but the Trundle's what his team needs from him. They need a tank, and the Trundle locked in. That is the third time, I believe, that he is playing Trundle throughout this series. So that is definitely the champion that he wants to be picking up. So quite a bit of very standard coming out of the side of Applecross for the first phase. On the side of Perth Modern, nothing we haven't seen before, and there is no way this Corky is going to get locked in. There we go, the Zin was untouched, and now... Oh wait, no, that's on the other side as well, what the... Yeah, Zin, Zin oh, no, finally yeah, gets... That's alright, yeah. that's alright. Because uh, Hassan was such a menace on that Draven, so like, screw it, let's ban it. And so they open up Ikajo's Zin Zhao, so we have not been able to see this, it's been banned just like the Master Yi, so obviously there's something there they don't like. And Zin Zhao's really good, early jungle clear, amazing ganks, really good 1v1 potential, and then... He's great at resetting the team fights. So a team fight happens, breaks out, it's unfavorable. He can just reset it, and then you guys can like think that your team can pretty much be like, okay, cool. Let's re let's let's rethink our strategy and go back at it anew. And so uh, since I was really good at that, and of course with the Vladimir Kaisa, he got amazing scaling. We saw our uh, playmaking being amazing. Uh, Vladimir and the respect man comes out. I mean. I don't think you needed to ban the Renekton there. Renekton wasn't the issue. The issue was you blind picked a Riven. So yeah. I'm a bit concerned by that ban. It wasn't necessary unless they plan on picking Riven again. But then, I don't know. There we go. Riven's taken away. So a bit of a mind games of, oh, you banned the Renekton. We banned the Riven, which we know you can't handle. And now it questions of if Exile is playing top lane, what champions are in his pool? What? Well, it's, it's quite curious how they first banned the Renekton, because what they could have done is save the Renekton ban for a bit later. Um, because at the end of the day, they could have saved it for the next ban, like this ban right here. Um, but they are banning the Alistair instead, because what happens is, Red Side has the counter pick. So even if they Exile did pick the Riven, then what could have happened is the Renekton counter pick could have been there. But they banned the Riven because they saw the Renekton ban. So they're like... So if they... If, if they ban the Alistair first, then the Renekton, the Riven could have got through, and they could have picked Renekton, and thus, no count without the Riven, without the Renekton counter pick, they might have just been able to get a snowball lane like they originally planned to. But exactly. unfortunately, the Riven ban it's uh ruins our hopes and dreams. Exactly. Morgana, however, did make it through the ban phase of this particular series, and there was quite a few issues from Morgana in game one. 
stuff, findings, catching people that perhaps it shouldn't have. So that's a pretty, pretty good pick. I do quite like that. And Morgana, Kaisa get against, going up against the Lulu and the Varus and Exile. Okay, playmaking was hovering Katarina during the first half of the Bikin Band. And Exile like, you know what? I see what you're offering. And I raise you the challenge. Now, this is... It might just be Exile going mid and Enticement going top. And with the Swain hover, this could very much be a Swain topside. And, uh, oh, that'll be something spicy. Indeed, but Emperor Wang does have himself the block. Oh! Oh, so there's a Darius. But they don't actually have the counter pick. So the counter pick is on the side of, uh, Perth Modern School. So, but what do you, what do you pick into the Darius? Would you, do you pick, like... Do you pick the Nasus and try to scale? Would you pick Lysandra. a Jax? Because I've seen um, seen Jax be picked to great extent. And even uh, Urgot's oh. an amazing uh, pick into the Darius because it's just so hard for the Darius to burst down uh -oh. the Urgot. Got the damage gap through the shield. But with the Orn being picked up, I do think that the Orn actually wins that matchup early. Early, definitely. But the issue with any uh, potato tank is that Darius wins those duels. Like, there's... No, at the end of the day, Darius has a lot of damage. He has healing in his kit, and he has a true damage execute. Orn, yeah, he has very good base damage. You can never forget it, but you get to one or two items, and I'm seriously concerned for Emperor Wang's Orn because Darius, he excels against tanks. So it's it's a little worrying to see that, that top lane matchup because if you focus that top lane matchup, if Izik visits top lane with that trundle he gets a good pillar placement to stop the orn from retreating that darius can snowball and assuming this is enticements darius top lane we all know what happens when enticement snowballs when enticement snowballs you are in for a world of pain uh it's it's oh we saw game one he absolutely decimated he was the sole reason why they won that game the mvp of that game but of course in this case, he's a top laner, and it's into an orange, so it's a lot harder for him to snowball this lane. Uh, in the mid lane, the Katarina counterpicked herself into the Vladimir, which I find quite peculiar, because Vladimir is actually quite good into assassins, being able to sustain them out, being able to avoid a lot of that burst. Um, so I'm not sure what the plan was there. Um, Hassan showed that he's an amazing Kaisa player. We are seeing the Kaisa Morgana into Lulu Varus. It's not like we haven't seen... Uh, any of those champs before we saw Varus, Lulu, and Kaisa all in the first game, and then Morgana, I believe, in the second game. Was it Morgana? Morgana was played in the first game, I believe. Let me double check my notes. So Morgana, it was, so the bottom lane for the side of Perth Modern in game one was Kaisa Morgana going up against the Varus Lulu. So this is a, a very similar bot. This is the exact replica of the bottom lanes that we saw in game number one. Yeah. But of course, this Kaiser might be going like for a Storm Raiser, more of a split build type rather than just the AP build. Better power spikes early, and also still amazing scaling. And you can do this because the Vladimir is still um, doing AP damage, so that way you have a good split. Um, but one of the key things you have to know is that they're they are a scaling comp. They do have the Vladimir, they do have the Kaiser. Um, whereas on the side of uh, Apple Cross. The Katarina is a snowball assassin. The Darius is a lane bully. The Trundle, Trundle, Trundle's just Trundle. Let's face the facts. Trundle's Trundle. gonna, Trundle's gonna Trundle, Trundle, Trundle. Um, and then we have the Varus Lulu, which is a hyper carry bot lane. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes from here, what happens, and uh, what the go is. Exactly. So we'll have to see as we will be loading ourselves into game number three in approximately fifty seconds now. It's a 1-1 one -one series, bro. Yep. And uh, I asked you the question, you, in game number one, I believe you, you favoured Perth Modern School. And I, they, oh, uh, I, thought, I thought that was for the series. Oh, that was for the series. Oh, okay. So you yeah. have faith in Perth Modern School with the Vladimir Kaiser Morgana. Yep, I'm sticking to my guns. Game. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm, I'm, I'm going with them for the series, 100%. I, I just, as something, okay, so, like, when they're when either team is behind, that's where the issue is. But we saw um, we saw a lot of weaknesses from Apple Cross in game two when they don't get the snowball, when they don't have that map pressure, when they don't have winning lane matchups. And 
if they don't have the winning lane matchups, they struggle a lot more than uh, Perth Modern School does. So I do think as a team, Perth Modern School is better. Um, if you look at the team comps, the team comp from Perth Modern School is better. For team fights, um, Darius is not going to be able to get ahead early. He's going to take a little bit longer to become that lane bully that he needs to be. Um, and even then, the Orn is always going to be relevant. Um, so I do think... I st I'm sticking with my guns. I'm saying I'm saying Perth Modern School. Let's go. All right. So we have one vote coming up from Prote in favor of Perth Modern School. But unfortunately, uh, that is the only vote they are getting from the casting desk today. As I have faith coming out of Applecross still. I look at the lane matchups. And yes, XR is going to struggle with his Katarina into the Vladimir. But having said that, Enticement's Darius. Enticement is a very good player if he manages to get an early lead. And I have faith that Enticement and Isaac will be able to get Enticement ahead. They visit Emperor Wang up in that top lane. He, the, you know, the Orn could be in quite a little bit of trouble. So, well, I, I hate to interrupt you here, but we have gotten a few things from Lucky Reedy in the chat, man. And I just I feel... haven't got Twitch up. I, 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 I was I, having net issues, so I pulled it down. I feel like I have to read it out. Okay. All right. Let's let's see what let's see what love we're getting from the chat today. So Lucky Reedy has said, with a median ATAR of ninety five point nine, the oh, gifted and talented students from Perth Modern School clearly have the upper hand coming into this game. However, these Apple Crossians are full of surprises inside and out. So who knows what we can expect of this game? Does median ATAR correlate to League of Legends skills? Find out in this blockbuster. <laughs> H-S-E-L semi-final coming right up! Perth mod full of nerds! No wonder, right. they're, so, no wonder they're so gifted on the rift. The question is, is Exiled, the former OC talented genius, anywhere near as good as a legend from Perth Modern School, Fangster as Katarina? And then he yeah. goes on and says, playmaking is three for tall IRL, don't be scared of Plaxians. <laughs> This is why I love casting events like this. You get the most amazing people in Twitch chat. I'm upset that my net's playing up. I would love to be able to reach Twitch chat right now because that that is a gem for humanity right there. But guys, we're gonna do this ye old StarCraft 2 intro. So guys, oh, on the red side, Perth Modern School in the top lane. We do have Emperor Wang on the Orn. We have Ikajo and Zinzao in the jungle. Uh, we have uh, playmaking on Vladimir in the mid lane and in the bot lane we have Hassan and Kathach on Kaisa and Morgana and on the blue side we have the one the only Apple Cross we have uh, enticement on Darius in the top lane we have uh, wait which one is it there we are exiled in, <laughs> exiled in the mid lane on Katarina we do have Izik on the jungle on Trundle and then in the bot lane we have Pandaren and Novice, the hyper carry bot lane. Will they close us out? Or is the great Perth Mon School going to be able to complete this reverse sweep? Find out on this episode of Dragon Ball Z. I had to um, stop it after three. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why you didn't hand over the second half, to be honest, but that was that was impressive, man. That's I don't know how your voice does that without like damaging itself, to be honest. It, it it it's um it's I uh I've got about one well, about thirty minutes left of talking now so. <laughs> yeah, so we're under time so hopefully these two teams will give us the timer that we're looking for but nothing coming out of these two teams early, which again isn't a huge surprise it's do or die in this scenario and so in a game scenario like this what do you think is the correct approach should they should the teams play a bit more passive a bit more scared or should they still go for broke and make the big plays for good or for worse. Uh, oh, I appear to be having a frozen screen again. Let's go. Oh, it appears that they're actually like Ikaja starting the top side with a red buff, and because of uh, Zinzao, he can actually do that. So he's going for the level two cheese gank, which he is, which Zinzao is really good at, especially with the red buff. So he's going to be able to burn the flash here. Oh, of course he is. He does burn the flash from Exiled, and it forces Exiled off a lot of uh. Oh, it's actually able to get so much off that with just the flash. He did start the red buff though, and now they know he started the red buff. So quite surprising there. Up in the top lane, enticement into Emperor Wang. So as far as that goes, um, Emperor Wang does win that matchup early, as we discussed earlier. But Ikaja's coming up for a cheese gang with the red buff. 
He's doing so much work there. He does have the phase rush. He's doing his so much damage. He knocks him up. Tasman's had to burn the flash. And right there, that is two flashes burnt in his little two minutes and 33 seconds. And that is only two jungle camps cleared. But of course, Ikajo is getting shut down here. He goes into enticement. He gets him really low. Tasman gets the heals down. The flash comes out from Ikajo. And Ikajo is able to get out of there alive. Izik is here getting a lot of damage, of course. But that is a flash burn from Izik. A flash burn from enticement. Flash burn from exile. Flash burn from Ikajo. That is one for three flashes on the side of a Perth Modern School. A great start right there. And but of course... Okay, Ooh, <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a fight in the playmaker. Unfortunately, uh, once again, we appear to have internet issues on my end. So, I'm afraid, Jackson, you'll be doing a lot of the play-by-play. -play, but early aggression coming out of Kojak is exactly what I feel like Perth Modern School need if they want to take this. I love that. Flash burn in the mid, flash burn in the top health, flash burn in the jungle. And the only summoner that was paid is Ikojak's own flash. So that's really good aggression. Mm, but of course, we do have Ikajo still in the top side, but he is very low, so he's gonna have to like back out here. But he's up in CS on the trundle. He's able to uh, burn so many flashes. He's probably gonna back and just be able to try and like, get a bottom side clear as well. Find this top lane, Emperor. Emperor Wang is now starting to struggle, so he's went from being the bullied to being the bullier to back to being the bullied. So it's it's a roller coaster ride for this guy up here. Exactly, but that's the issue when you pick a tank into a Darius. He just does so much damage, and you can never forget the bleed that comes out of Darius's passive. Passive that hemorrhage just does so much damage over time, as well as the brute force healing that comes out of him as well. I mean, it's a really rough lane. But it is, like, he willingly picked the tank into it, so clearly the Emperor knows what he's doing, or he simply does not know how much it sucks to play a potato tank into Darius. Well, it's like, one of those things where he picked for the team instead of himself, most likely, but he's currently out of mana, he's currently out of, uh, he's, <laughs> he's pretty much just out of everything right now. He needs to somehow get back into this lane, and of course, Ikajo doing a lot more work right here. And it's just, it just pretty much just bullies Izik out. And this is such a, this is almost as problematic as Iatos' internet issues. Basically at this point, see Ixald having a lot of fun with playmaking in that mid lane. I think it may have resynced ourselves. The Kojak going up on to Izik. And actually Izik decides to try and take this, but I think that's going to be really careful. With Kojak, Zin Zhao was worth banning for the first two games. So clearly this man knows when it's his turn to fight. Of course, Enticement, we do know, is their carry player we showed in the first game. And on this Darius, he is currently destroying. He's up 7 CS, and he's just he's just staying so healthy compared to Emperor Wang. Um, but the longer this laning phase goes on, the more uh, Orn can come back into it and just try and like get those items using his passive. And with the first back, and with that extra health, it's going to be very hard to execute him as Darius because... Health is pretty much the hard counter to how Darius works. And uh, it's, it's working quite fine right now by the looks of it, as he's able to... Only, he's only one wave of CS behind uh, the Darius. Deep, tell you who's not only one wave of CS behind the opposite number. Playmaking in this mid lane is 12 CS down on Exile, which is a bit odd, especially considering, as we mentioned earlier, Vladimir is considered a good, like, you know, champion to go up against Ex uh, get going up against the Katarina. Oh, the issue is that the Katarina is, at the end of the day, a Snowball AP Assassin. So, she does a lot more damage early than this scaling team fight AP control mage with Vladimir. So, even though Vladimir is kind of counter because, like, oh, you go into the Vladimir and you can't really do much to him, it's more the fact that he's, you're still going to lose the lane up against something like this, um, uh, yeah, up against something like this, uh, Oh wow, we have actually got an engage up here happening. Call the Forge God comes in, and of course the Darius has to turn around, but he's picked up by the Zin Zhao. Ikajo is doing work this game, and I see why now they banned out the um, Zin Zhao the, the first couple games. Exactly, the early aggression coming out of this champion is just so difficult to deal with, because like, unlike the Uji that Ikoja has been picking the last two days, last, last two games, Zin has a way in. He has himself a free gap closer, so it's nice and easy to get in there and just force an easy fight, which is what he's been doing a, like a, 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 a lot recently. Yep, but of course Applecross is able to pick up the dragon because I know where Akaja is, and this is one of the issues with ganking so much is that people always know where you are. And so it's harder to get those ganks off, and then it's at the same time it's easier to like make sure that you aren't going to get onto certain objectives 
So really well done right there by um Applecross to be able to capitalize. And it's from here, it's just pretty much it's pretty much the farm fest. And right now Akadra is just decimating this farm fest. And it looks like it might be coming out for another gank. He's come up on enticement. Enticements are uh, trying to use the um is trying to just get out of there alive, but there's so much damage coming out. The red buff is just burning like crazy. And uh enticement is really low, and it looks like Kai is just gonna head out of there after uh basically winning the lane for Emperor Wang right there. Exactly. We talked about I mentioned earlier how I would love for Izik to help enticement up in this top side of the map, but it seems like Perth Modern School got that note instead. That is, I think, the second or even third time Ekoja has visited the top lane, but now they're finally getting a little bit of love, and that love is in a three-man dive that could be possibly coming in with Exile here as well. Yeah, but it looks if what they'll have to do is because they expanded so many resources, they're gonna actually have to try and get this tower. Others may just be a waste of resources, but it looks like they're just gonna back up. Otherwise, they may lose more than they bargained for. Um, it, it appears to be a pause. Uh, yeah. So the pause is I will find out for you. Jungle uh, I do know the the uh the AD carry. So Hassan has to quickly get something done, unfortunately. But oh, it's but not a technical issue. It is a bit of a I guess you could call it a player issue. No, no blue blue side jungler um la as DC or like. Give me a sec. Oh. Yeah, it's if you scroll up a bit in the chat. It's, oh yeah, um, you're right. Jungle oh, internet now, problem. And the more we know, internet issues appear to not just be uh exclusive for the casters. It seems. No, it's it's uh it's OC wide, OCE wide. Okay, so while we have a pause, Playmaking did this last game and I didn't call him out for it, and now I am. Playmaking's build pathing has been very odd. Last game, he bought a Blasting Wand, then he got a, then he got a Death Cap, and then he bought a uh, needlessly large rod. This game, he's bought in two Blasting Wands. Now, I don't play a whole lot of Vladimir, but this does not seem the most... It's efficient goal wise for the base for the for the base A B A P stats, it's very efficient gold wise because with the um with the fully built AP items, they are very they're they're they usually have other stats in them. If he's going for straight damage, then the uh Nisi Large Rod and the Blasting Wand are better. Just for straight damage. But if you're looking for like more um like those off-handed effects and more health and stuff like that, then obviously the completed item is better. Well, we'll have to see how that, if that does work out for playmaking. I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I think, you know, if you can complete an item, you probably should be going for it. But, you know, clearly playmaking is uh, the one making the plays in this particular game. So we'll have to see where that goes as once. Oh, Lord, you have to play my play again. Yeah. But, uh, but it's it's one of those things where it's like, it's it's... It's a very, it's a very curious way to go, especially considering it's an AP mid assassin. So you don't want to make sure you don't fail out on that too much by, well, basically you don't want to make sure you don't fall to him too much by building like those armor, uh, those health stats. Of course, uh, there's the flash. He just shows up into lane and he flashes. Ikajo has that much presence. He's literally just been everywhere and he's still ahead and farm on the trundle. He has burnt at least five flashes. I swear to God. He's burnt at he's burnt three flashes of the top mid and jungle oh dear. He's 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 burnt two flashes from mid now. He burnt one flash at the very start and then He's burnt another one just now, so that's burnt. I mean four. we can see why it was a ban a ban against him. This dude is super active on this champion, and that's a huge step by the Oz. And there we have the issue with going the um the double blasting as opposed to like building like the tank items which you normally do on Vladimir. Where it's like you just don't have the stats uh, to like be able to survive that kind of burst, and with the ignite, that's a lot of um, healing reduction that is uh, quite problematic for Vladimir to deal with. Exactly, I appear to be completely desynced and lost. So we are at ten minutes and ten seconds right now. Ten. Ah, oh, I have completely lost myself. Yep, so internet problems galore, but of course we do have Emperor Wang just going for a bit of a trade up there. Um, he does get the uh, the four stack on him from the Darius, which is an absolute nightmare to deal with. So much damage, but of course, it's an aura and he doesn't really worry too much. He is going for the Iceborne Gauntlet first. So he's gonna be able to start trading back very soon. Um, and it's, Izik is actually pretty low trying to go for this Rift Herald, but it does appear that Apricross is definitely playing a objective focused game. They've got the first Drake, now they've got the uh, Rift Herald and it's, um. This is, this is what happens when you have that pressure, because they do have the pressure on the top side, they do have the pressure in the mid, and as much as Akajo is trying, he's not able to quite get the uh, 
pressure that he wants. Oh, but exactly. I mean, he's getting a lot of pressure on the map because we've seen that in the burnt flash. But the issue is that burning a couple flashes isn't necessarily enough to make it up as exiled. It looks like he may want to force something. Oh. Alright, yep, Exile, Exile tried to force something there, but it's like, oh, he actually goes in, he uses the ultimate, then his solo, playmaking has had to flash away! The Shun probably was able to close the distance, but of course, Ekadro's here, he's looking to try and, like, make a play on him, but of course, Ekadro's gonna shove in the mid lane, and, um, there's a bit of a fight up in the top lane, the binding lines, but of course, Ekadro's here on Exile, Exile is getting pretty low, Ekadro's low as well, but Exile has to be very careful, is able to pick up the kill, and that is 300 gold right into the pocket, of uh, Kajo, of course, up in the top lane, and Tysman and Impera Wang are once again having a wet noodle fight for all hell to break loose. Exactly. It's not necessarily a wet noodle fight purely because Tysman actually has a pretty good shot to be able to kill Emperor Wang purely because, well, Darius is uh, Darius. But it's going to be a lot of trading with Emperor Wang copping the worst of it until I think he builds his War Mogs, and then he should be able to simply sustain his way up to there and be fine. Oh my god, the play is sorry, I was just shocked in awe, and that was the outplay of outplays from Emperor Wang. So recap, we saw enticement just decimate Emperor Wang's health bar, and then Emperor Wang's like, you know what? Call the Forge God, let's lock him up, let's get the shield, let's get the brittle, and let's clap him. And clap him he did as enticement went down. Absolutely decimated. That should not be happening, and that is disastrous for the top side of Applecross Senior High School because this is the Darius who should be winning this. Darius should be in control of this top lane, beating away on this potato tank, but instead, the Emperor, with all the help that he's gotten from Ikoja, is just able to fight his way out of there. With that Iceborne Gauntlet now, now complete, he has a bit of damage under his belt. Quite a lot of damage, to be honest, and it does... It's... It's it's insane. Like, and the Emperor Wang is up here. He's able to like stop the Rift Herald as well. So, you have to try. It's to try and like get something off this Rift Herald. But of course, in the meantime, Ikaja is down here. So much work coming out. The chains of corruption are on Ikaja. Ikaja's trying to go in. We do have um, Hasten coming in as well. Just showing so much damage, teeing off like crazy. Is X really low? Use the subject again, but he's he actually gets taken out by ha Hasten. In the meantime, the Rift Herald in the top lane is actually able to take one tower. Emperor Wang is just trying to uh. Just trying to like keep the second tower alive down in the bot lane. They're still casting of the dragon. Exiled is here. He is actually getting poked down though. They do not have the poke. He needs to engage. Otherwise, get the hell out. And he chooses to get the hell out of dodge. Indeed, but that is disastrous. They lose the turret on the top side of the map. So I believe that is two turrets falling on the in favor of Apple Cross or Perth. Haven't been able to touch, but I'm stuck at a completely behind us. So I'm just gonna have to hope I'm getting this correct. As uh, the dragon. Doesn't appear to have gone down, though I'm very far behind. <laughs> I'm 14, 15, and pausing here. Uh, I'm at I'm at 13, 50. I'm my net does not like me today, unfortunately. But top lane, what was it? 14, 15. Yeah, 14, 15. So we are going to be waiting for 14, 15. Um, it's uh, we're just 14, 14 21. 21, according to our Sorry. host. Sweet, I'm gonna like go up to 14, 21. Um, I'll catch then, up in a couple seconds. Apologies about this guy again. O Welcome to Oceana. I, I, I have no idea what to run about. I have amazing internet here in OC. Yeah, but I'm also doing wireless, which probably doesn't help. Oh, that's that's a pity, isn't it? That's, well, that's, um... the issue is the uh, the router's a bit too far away from where I've made my setup. So the what is a bit too far away? The router. The router. Um, have you ever tried running a cord? That's the issue. It's too far away. The cord for the cord to run. Uh, like, how 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 far away is that? I don't know. A while. I'll we can, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll debate the, the the discussions of how far I've made my setup away uh, from the road in a couple minutes. But uh, I am at fourteen twenty one now. So if you want to count us in, yeah. uh, please, vote. Yep. Okay, guys. In a three, two, seven, six, four, Wait, what? three, two, one, and unpause. You are the most agitating person to work with sometimes, and I love you for it. <laughs> I got so confused when you burn up to seven. I'm like, wait, 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 what? What is going on? What is this madness? We're not in Sparta. Uh, it's, um, this is, uh... <laughs> this is I just being your friend in a nutshell. You have no Pretty... idea what's going on. Pretty much. It's like, it's like, it's, 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 whenever I get kidnapped, you just know they'll just give me back. It's like, he's keep trying to get us to do shots. Uh, we can't take any <laughs> 
indeed. But focusing back on the League of Legends game that we have been casting or attempting to cast for the past 15 minutes, the Mountain Dragon is up and available, and it looks like Perth Modern School committing four people down to that bottom side. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense with Izak in the top side of the map. I don't think they can contest this. Yeah, but of course, this does mean that Mountain Drake goes to the side of Perth Modern School. Um, and amazing uh, object objective taking right there, but they do lose a third towel for it. And we're seeing the same issue that they had in the first game, where they give up these objectives and they don't really give us support to watch out losing the turn. Force the fight here. The Darius has finally gotten access to the back line. The Morgana not doing a whole lot of cutting. Meanwhile, the bottom side, Exar manages to pick himself up. One manages to get a second kill on Kazet, who eventually goes another. Darius is gone. The Rezus, he's getting the dunk to the double kill and a flash from the Emperor. Who wants to get the hell out of Dodge? But it looks like the Darius does not give a damn where you want to go. The bleed out is enough. There we go. The shut down. And that is a 5 for one ace at 60 minutes. Yep, they lose the dragon, but take the entire world as they are able to get like, uh, it's, Isaac just didn't go down. The polymorph was on him. Ikajo tried to do the work, but he was not able to. And of course, in turn, this does mean that, um, uh, it's, it's, they lose two towers. They lose their entire team and they're 4,000 gold down. It's at, at 16 minutes. This is a four to zero tower, uh, differential and it's with this Darius now picking up those three kills. It's it's a question of like, where do they go from here? How can they come back? Can they make sure this Darius doesn't just bully the Orin out of lane from here on out? Oh, it's gonna be a bit harder because it looks like he will be building a Steric Gauge as a second item, having himself the Jarum's Fist. He'll be able to punch his way through anything, and that's an issue because Darius, if he gets it, if he can get a snowball. I, I mentioned earlier how a snowballing Gryphon or a snowballing Renekton is terrifying. Snowball Darius against a team that only has one good tank killing threat out of Hassan. Actually, a Kojak is there too, but it's just like, well, he's not dying and he's healing a lot. Hey guys, he's not dying. He's not dying. How do we kill him? That's uh, that's uh, current voice voice comms of um. Of, uh, that, that's, the, that's the voice comes of Perth Mon in that last team fight. Like, Darius got low, and then it's like the dunk happened, and he's like, uh oh. Oh no. Oh no! Yeah, you know when Darius gets that first kill, there's a problem. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear the team comes in this. Just, just, I'd love to hear the moment Darius got the reset. That's what. I, that's all I want to hear in this world right now. It's just hear the, the Perth Modern School realizing Darius got a reset. Oh, it's, it's going to be absolutely insane. So. It's, it's it'll it'll be quite interesting to see where this goes from here, how it goes from there. Um, but playmaking is playmaking is starting to scale up. He does have the double blasting one. He does look like he's either going to get either Spirit Visage, Merlinomicon, or Leandris. Most likely the Merlinomicon to deal with that healing. But oh my lord, Exiled! What a he goes in. Dies for- oh no, never mind, I thought he got to kill Hassan, never mind. Exiled, I- okay. <laughs> Exiled was a monster, and of course, just like the Monster Hunter game, he was destroyed. He was hunted down for his parts, and then, uh, I mean, yeah. He wasn't hunted down, he willingly jumped in there. Well, maybe he thought he was a big monster, and he's like, hey, hey guys, I can take these guys. <laughs> Clearly and, um, he could not. As I, I thought he, I legitimately thought Hassan was a dead man, but say who might be a dead man is a Koja who gets locked in. Oh no, the pillar's not enough to lock him in, so he managed to get his way out of there alive with utilizing that blast cone, so. Yep, and of course we do have a great escape happening right here. But of course, it's we have playmaking and uh Hassan sharing farm in the bot lane. So this is um your traditional uh double carry uh bot lane share. Um not sure how uh, that farm allocation worked, but yeah, it's, it's um. Well, like, we're looking at this. This isn't the first time we've seen Perth Modern School misallocating their champions. So, and when we say that, we don't mean it in terms of like, oh, they picked the wrong champion. We mean they're not in the position. Oh, Hassan, that exile, you're a disgusting man. That was beautiful. That was indeed. <laughs> I was absolute disaster right there. You know what would be really cool? Okay, if someone was uh, to put a voice recorder into all the voice comms. Oh, we'll come back to that in a little bit. His parent is completely caught out. The wild growth might be able to save him alive. Meanwhile, Navis is untouched. He 
arrow is coming out left, right, and center, and they've got to be so careful with while their chains of corruption is down, enticement is on the top side of the map, and they've got to deal with them. Yep. So enticement goes down. Oh, uh, sorry. Enticement is sorry. Enticement is pushing like crazy, and he's got so much wave clear as a Darius. So we need to crash that wave in. But of course, we do have the hate Hassan and Kathash to start matching that. But a Kaja oh, might get no, caught out. You can't be farming your own jungle right now, Akoja. Like Exiled is not afraid to force fights. He's constantly going in, as we saw. We uh, saw three times already. So. You need to get proper vision control, otherwise Exiled, he's gonna find you, and he is gonna kill you. He's basically Liam Neeson. Sorry, just imagining Liam Neeson with a wig. <laughs> Not how I interpreted that that quote at all. And all I'm getting take is it and I like it. And all I'm getting is Qui Gon Jin. That cause that is Liam Neeson in a wig. Quite literally. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, I, this is, this is not going where I thought it would go. <laughs> but it's exactly where we wanted it to go. Let's yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, um, it's not like I'm disappointed, I'm just... Uh-oh. I don't know, I'm not disappointed, but I'm something. I don't know. So, whoa! Emperor Wang! That, I like the idea, being very safe with the flash. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh god, Exile is on the rampage! He takes one! He is gonna fall after only one. I thought he would get a little bit more for that, but... Outnumbered a tad bit, but with the support Morgana down, they might be able to force back the dragon here, especially because Darius is still topside and still pushing. Oh, never mind, that's a teleport coming in. Call the Forge God as well gets a double man knock up, but Darius pops up. He gets the first dunk. He managed to pull in the Kaiser. He throws out a second dunk. Kaiser is in quite a bit of trouble. The overcharge to try and keep herself safe, but the Afra Hen pulled her close enough to get the double kill and the the Nuxian soldier manages to pick himself up too and his team pick up the dragon yep so 12 to 6 6,000 gold lead 4,000 to 0 two infernal drakes now as well and considering how much base stats the Darius has when he builds that steric gauge it's going to be it's it's definitely going to be all um it's 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 literally the top lane carries his last two games and that has been like deciding factors in both the games. Exactly, but this game it seems uh, Applecross got the better end of the stick, getting themselves the carry jungle, while Emperor Wang pushed himself onto a tank to try and survive the onslaught, but it was not enough as Baron is down to 4k health, but there is the possibility of a contestion, and Kircha is poking around the outside, 2k health, Teleport coming in now, is there the potential of a steal? Oh my god, are you kidding me? The Dark Biden gets the steal! Whereas the team is coming in first, but it is wiping him away. That should not have happened. Dark Binding to steal the Baron. I do not believe this right now. That was insane right there. Um, it's... I, I, I don't even... I don't even know how to... It is a dark binding! A yeah. dark binding! Yeah, alright, I'll give you a, a... Let's do a little bit of a test thing. How much damage do we think... That, how much damage do you think the dark binding does? Um... Wouldn't do much, it'd be like... Uh, 200 damage, surely. Like, uh... Yeah, it'd be like 200, 200, 300 damage, surely. 300 damage base, and has an additional 51 damage to it. So about... We'll be generous and call it 350. Oh, how, but let's say, so, so how much, oh, uh, so let me just check this, so, it is saying it's 378, so, Baron, how much magic does the Baron have, though? I have no idea, and I'm not risking desyncing to find out. Yeah, so, it's, um... But it shouldn't have happened, straight up, like, of all abilities, the worst one I've ever seen is, of course, the, uh, I think everyone remembers Bloodwater's Janna Tornado, from Yeah, the Janna Tornado, yeah. Uh, there's also yeah, a Karma yeah. Q, I remember, in, um... Karma Q from Worlds, yep. Yep. But that... Support, that was... and Healer Sung recently, I believe, last split stole it with a Lulu Q. So, supports and Baron, man, that's what we're learning. And also, we're learning that supports are not allowed to live in this world as, it, as the Lulu falls. And, uh, looks like they are often to dive into the back line that Darius is doing his best, but unfortunately, his best is just not enough, as Navis falls in the back line from playmaking, so... The momentum lead from this Baron could give Perth Modern a hell of a crack at the base of uh, Applecross. Yep, and with Izzik and Exile, the only two up, 
This is definitely a 5v2 situation with Barons brushing it in. You do have the Katamina as well. The card's deciding, screw it, I'm just gonna tank it. We can take this, we can take this to the inhibitor. And they're just hard pushing this down mid. And Tyson mean, up for another 19. Yeah, no, no, there's no way they can end this. No there's way, like, no way. 10 seconds for Navasan and Tyson, so they're forced to back away. It looks like they may be going top lane where there is plenty of gold sitting on the map, but with the middle lane inhibitor line cracked at 25 minutes, it's a little worrying for the side of Applecross, who they dignitased the Baron. There's no other way to put it. They were in a great position, and then they dignitased. In the words of Skara, they're winning until they lose. <laughs> they're winning until, uh, up until we lose the game, we are winning. And that is definitely what is happening for the side of Applecross. They were in a fantastic position, and then it just didn't seem to work out. And Applecross aren't responding. They've sent Exile mid. And they're in the bottom lane to the bottom side of the map. What? This is... We called out Perth Modern School for not having the best lane allocation, but this is exactly that happening. Yep, and once again, we're seeing the issue of neither team knows how to play at a deficit. Neither team knows how to play to in react new pressure. If they're being proactive, they're fantastic. But as soon as they start playing reactively, that's when they start faltering. And we see for the first time this game, Perth Modern School actually has a lead 200 gold 100 gold 200 gold 100 200 so let's just say it's around about that mark yeah let's just let's just say it's about even at this point with the gold fluctuating in the hundreds one way or the other but it's definitely a good momentum swing for perth modern school if they want to take a crack at this because they've got the middle lane pushing for them they can now i think realistically head to the bottom side of the map and force the turrets out there because They've got all the momentum in this game right now, and they're the team fight comp as well, with the Orn that can force the fight, with the AOE coming out of playmaking Vladimir, while Applecross, with a more pick-oriented comp, just haven't done the picks. Pick-oriented comp with the um, Darius split push, and of course, Darius has the Black Cleaver, the Spear Visage, and the Sterex Gauge, but still is like he was doing some amazing work before but after that he's he's lost a lot of his valor and he's he's currently just meandering by he's got like a 3000 gold lead but literally it's like the rest of his team is behind it's literally Darius is the one holding the team like just together by threads and um oh sorry it's the jungle so it's a Kajo that is where all the gold lead is or where the gold is for um Perth Modern School so that's actually amazing. The Kajo is 200 CS at 27 minutes. He's a carry oriented jungler. He knows what he wants and he wants all the CS on the map. But it looks like he also wants himself the Mountain Dragon. And if they're able to secure that's a Mountain Dragon symbol. Is that an, that's an Infernal. No, never mind. Apologies. That is an Infernal Dragon that will be spawning in. Now, if Applecross can secure this, that is a three Infernal Dragon team comp. And that is damn well terrifying. So. Is almost have to force the fight here, but against the Ornhorn, I'm not sure it's what they want to do. As we see, all of them stacked up. They're not exactly sure what they want to commit to. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things where all they have to do is they have to stalk because they have top oh. wave. A They're massive. By making us access to the back line, knocked up and forced to stay pull his way out of there. Me mother Darius gets a two man apprehend. Dunks are coming through, but it's not enough. He's forced to fight his way out of there. A shutdown going into Varus, who's untouched throughout all of this fight. The killer instinct is not enough, and disaster strikes for Perth Modern, where they simply couldn't get anything. Playmaking tried to go in, he got shut down immediately, forced to get his way out of there. The Emperor tried to force the fight and enticing did a hell of a job tanking it, and while all of that happened, Navis on his Varus, untouched. Yeah, and there we have it. That's all you really need to have. You just need to have uh your ADC just being able to like just put uh tackle like crazy. And look at that attack move. Look at that stutter step right there. He is a that clean AD carry. That is absolutely clean. Like I can only think of a few ADCs that I've seen that can do it like to that extent. I remember back when um Cogmore was uh, an absolute oh, monster. Cogmore. Cogmore. Five attacks, five attacks per second, and like you literally just couldn't move it. And I remember seeing a video where someone actually did, and it's like, what is this bull? What is this bull? Yeah, I've, no I've seen that, is. but I've also seen it because it was a scripter who had a script to do the attack move combos. So. Oh, that ruins it. Yeah, that, that, that maybe really ruins it. Maybe a different clip. I simply remember, I believe it was LS did a video talking about um, when Cogmore was like the champion to pick. So 
But that was, you know, I think that was like a season or two ago anyway. Um, back when you were getting away with Cogmore jungle and high elo just because Cogmore was, was, was insane. Back when, back when Cogmore, the, um, one of the abilities got reworked. So it doubled your attack speed and it removed the cap, uh, removed the cap to like five attack speed or something like that. Yep. So it's like, it was during that period of just dis devastation. Then they reverted it because they're like, um, this Cogmore is actually one of is literally first pick ban in competitive play and that's and not- Ramus was meta silly because Cogmore was. Basically, I like that. I quite like that Ramus popped up because AD carries were too strong, which kind of welcome to 2017. Oh, oh my god. That's- <laughs> It's- And it's, it's one of the things, like, everyone complained about the AD carry changes, and it's like, it's one of those things where people need to adapt to the game, and it's- At the end of the day, it's all reverted back to normal. People complain for so long. Honestly, AD carries probably changed the least out of any lane. And- AD and ADC mains complain non-stop, and that's just such a peculiar thing for me. I mean, it's like, well, they've got to, they've got to have someone to blame when they lose their lane, and it can't be them because they're you know it's infallible. An AD carry player can't be without fault. But something I do want to point out: Navis did this last game, and I believe in game one as well. He's sitting at borderline 10 CS a minute. Again, again, yes, again. What the hell is this CS like? And he's not- he's also been constantly fighting. He's 4-1-7 and seven at nearly 10 CS a minute. That's- that's terrifying, because he is a strong boy. He's two levels above Hassan, and he has a full item above Hassan as well. Yep, he's got that- what is that? The Mortal Reminder? Mortal Reminder, this- because, uh, Vladimir- well, he yep. has an answer, and it's called anything called Healing Reduction. Yeah, but Vladimir is still an absolute beast long as this game goes. He does have the Void Staff, he does have the Merlin Omicron, and actually doesn't even have a third item right here. Uh, the Katarina does, but the Vladimir against the, um... So if you look at playmaking against Narvis, Narvis is just so far ahead. He is standing head and shoulders above everyone else. So... Such a curious thing. Indeed, yeah, curious, unfortunately. Enticement, um... You're a little pushed up, buddy. And I don't believe you'll be able to make your way out of this one call. The Forge comes up to spot the Sturt stage, but it is simply too easy. And now we make the decision. Do you go for Baron or do you stop the four men that are shoving it up mid? Well, sure, you, sure you'd have to try and stop the four man because you are you don't want an open uh, open Nexus. You're going to get it anyway. Um, oh no, they managed to hold it, but Hemoplake is down because they used it in the fight. They never forced to flash out of there. Oh my lord! Exile takes down Flamemaker with a click of his fingers. Goes back in the change of corruption, are locking them out. Exile now is exhausted and locked down, but he have finally taken out. But while all this Navis is untouched throughout all this, once again, they have ignored the Varus and it has become the crux. The last two team fights and this one as well. They want to end. Look, they're pushing up the minions. They want to try and end this game right here, right now. They're sitting on three Infernal Dragons. That turret is getting absolutely shredded. Teleport coming in as well. First Nexus turret falls. Navis is untouched, just free hitting away. Finally, the Darius has come in. Navis is just shredding them apart. The Instinct says, you know what? This is my kill. The dunk coming out of the Darius. The Emperor will fall to that dunk of, of enticement. And that is Applecross Senior High School taking the series 2 and 0 over Perth Modern School. Yeah, and of course, Applecross, I, I unfortunately did not call it, but Applecross did show up. They did prove to be the better team. Enticement and uh, Exile with the flex, putting the Darius up in that top lane, absolutely destroying it right there. He's able to pick up kills left, right, and center. Um, during that entire time, though, uh, Novice was able to just free hit as they had so many threats to deal with. They had so many big, beefy guys in the Trundle and the Darius. And then they had to just avoid everyone else. And it's... It just got to the point where Narvis was like, Hey, there's a team fight. I'm just going to stand here and auto. And uh, next thing you know, it's, 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 it's a free win. Exactly. So, really good job there. You had no faith in them, Pro. And unfortunately, your faith was misplaced. As seeing uh, Applecross struggled in game two. We're not going to lie to ourselves. But I think that may have been a bit of an oopsies in the draft with a blind pick Raven. But... At the end of the day, Applecross will be advancing their way through the high school esports league bracket. But unfortunately, at, their, at the sign of their victory is going to be the skew for the end of our broadcast tonight. So, of course, I'd like to thank everybody for who has spent, you know, 
last, I believe, two, two nearly three hours uh, spectating and joining us along the story of these two teams who have been duking it out to advance their way through this league. And of course, the organizers of this event, you know, the teachers and, um, and high, school e high school esports league itself for making sure an event like this can be running. Yep, guys. So, guys, um, it's massive thank you to you all. Thank you to our broadcaster, you know, as well, who you, whose voice you cannot hear. Uh, lovely girl. Um, thank you to High School E League. Thank you to uh, it's everyone, everyone involved, teachers, students, everyone of the like, even people who get involved as coaches and everything, uh, and everything as we saw in a previous game today. Um, once again, thank you to the one, the only, you and Iatos Reed for play by playing today, even through all the internet issues. <laughs> Massive shout out to you and internet for not completely cutting out, but only yeah, I'm genuinely out. shocked I wasn't uh, dropped from that, but of course. Must thank you, of course, uh, Jackson Froke Williams for joining us for both games. Of course, you were here for the first series that was on at four o'clock earlier today, and of course, powered your way through to the second series as well. So, thank you very much for soldiering your way through that. But on that note, that is going to be it from us on the side of the broadcast team. So, of course, what a final thank you for everyone for participating, and of course, the players for giving us one hell of a spectacle to wrap up tonight. So, I believe there are still games next week for another series of playoffs. And then we start poking at finals. Yeah, guys. So, guys, just make sure you uh, make sure you tune in next week. Uh, and, uh, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure tonight. Have a good one, guys. Um, and I'm just going to have a quick look at the chat. 10-meter uh, Ethernet cable, 1775 at Bunnings. Yeah, just a heads up. Is that, so, is guys, that from the chat? Is that from the chat? Yeah, Give me a little love. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Chat. Unfortunately, I, I, would, I normally do try and do my best to spectate and have a chat with y'all. But... Uh, this week has proved too much for my poor little internet to handle, but hopefully for next week's games, my internet will be uh, a lot more compliant and we'll be able to have ourselves a little bit of a chat, but that is going to be it from us. So we will be signing ourselves off and hopefully seeing you guys next week. Ciao.